Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to All Invitational Qualifiers Group E, Group Echo. We have, uh, I think this, this is the last one uh, of the qualifier rounds that we're gonna, we have to cast, and then we'll be moving on to the uh, round of 16 right after this. So, um, well, not right after this. The next video and the next time we sit down, we'll be doing the round of 16. So, for Group Echo, Echo Group, we have Pososa. Uh, Asmodian, Tool, and Surreal. Um, not necessarily the strongest players in the in the tournament, if ELO has anything to say about it, but um, some dangerous people, uh, nonetheless, really, actually. Don't let me undersell them, because uh, I'm sure they'd whoop my butt all up and down this stage. Um, first match we're going to look at, actually, is Pososa and Asmodian. So, they're going to start their match on Backwater, Elliot, actually right here yep so we're gonna jump right into game number one and we're gonna we're gonna get to solo casting uh if you are watching and you want to join me in this cast i will take a co-caster at any moment well in between games all right so this first map is blackwater le it is a two base map um looks to be a good couple avenues of approach into the middle and uh kind of a protected fourth base uh, from at least ground assaults. Um, but jumping right into this first, best of three. Spawning in the bottom right hand corner, the Green Terran, Asmodian. In the top left hand corner, the Red Zerg, Pisosa. Talked to um, both these players before. Uh, nothing, nothing actually entirely significant. Uh, I've known Pososa for a little bit. And Asmodian asked me to play some Diablo 3. That's his game. Um, I'm hoping maybe to join him in that one day. I've not tried out the Necromancer, so maybe that'll be a, a fun bout. And I'll get to know some more of these uh, fantastic all in players. Uh, coming up here, building the wall. Hey, SEV. Nice wall you got there. Be a shame if somebody were to bane bust it. All right, coming up over here, taking a look at the Zerg. Looks like he is gonna be going fairly standard. I expect a drone to be sent down to take his natural, going hatch gas, uh, potentially hatch gas pool, maybe uh, avoiding the gas. We'll see what his next couple buildings are. And nothing too crazy out here from uh, from Asmodian. Should see a Reaper soon. A couple more SCVs moved in the gas. He's gonna go out and get what information he can. So. Waiting for 300 minerals, a little behind, while well, whatever he was focusing on up here, about 59 minerals short of getting that in perfect timing. <laughs> and thank you for joining us, Goner. It is appreciated. Alright, Pososa. With the hatchery. Pososa. With the gas. But nothing too spectacular going on yet. Am I on? I am on slow. How does that keep happening? What is doing it? So, for the first minute and a half, we watch slow speed. Normal speed? Fast speed. It's probably fast speed. So, I don't have any buttons that are specifically set to that, so I'll have to double check my settings later. It does seem that every time I go into replays, uh, for the first time in a while, I get that. So, there's the uh, there's the fully saturated gas. we got the natural coming here. Um, so, it was not only slow, it was remarkably slow. Slower than normal. Right here, uh, Barracks, there goes the Reaper, he's going to send him out here uh, to the front, we'll see where he transitions uh, that Reaper, we do have an SCV scout coming out and take a look around, maybe or maybe not, he feels, up. Oh, he sees the natural, he knows he doesn't have anything to worry about immediately, uh, at least no, no cheese, he sees the drone going out to do something, uh, going out potentially, start mining, nope, he's going to start mining, there's no, uh, no third going out there, nothing he's got to, nothing he can really take advantage of here, there's no immediate weakness, uh, you know, anything Pasos is doing. Now, over here, we do see the factory go down. This is a little well as a reactor, so taking a look at the gas situation, we may be seeing uh, a handful of Hellions being pushed out two at a time. We may be switching into mech, um, or that may just be to push out additional Marines. Historically, we should see a couple extra mech here. Some good positioning here from the Overlord. Uh, kind of see big army movements uh, going over here to the west. As well as potential uh, potential spot need drones, you can peek over here, check see if there's a third. Uh, all while being uh, well out of sight and not being visible. Down here, this one's gonna come over here and watch for. You'll be able to see drops and things coming through the air. He's also gonna have an eye over here in the third. 
uh, natural being saturated two queens speed being uh, worked on right now starport just went down and there goes your two hellions after the switch onto the reactor uh, behind this he is pumping out a marine and there goes the reaper now he feels his time he needs to know what's going on uh, he's gonna get over there and he's gonna see a roach warren just about or actually finished and a couple links going around here to poke it's a scout I uh, will see what they get done with these hellions in a pretty good position uh, it may be hard, but nope, they're just going to take this tower. They have this tower here. They have a good vision on just about all major army movements, uh, save for ones that do their best to sneak, uh, kind of go out of their way to avoid those towers. They'd have to come up to here, and even then they're going to be spotted by the over there. Great actual, great vision over here for Persosa. He owns so much of this map vision. And we do see that Reaper uh, going in here getting, uh, getting zero kills, but it does take a look at what he learned. Uh, he did see the Roach Warren, so he got everything he needed, and he got out of there with his life. Uh, but we do have a handful of Roaches coming over here. Uh, 20 Lings behind this. Um, they're going to be met with some Hellions, which are uh, relatively ineffective against the Roaches, uh, followed by uh, Liberator, which, if you remember from my last cast, Liberators, or excuse me, Roaches don't shoot up, so they may give him some trouble. Um, he's going to plant right there, right in the middle, and really set the battlefield that Asmodian wants to fight in. And he's got absolutely good control and movement with these these Hellions. He gets to really pick the best engagement. And this choke point um, is essentially uh, the only avenue into this into this base. So he's going to take this fight. He's going to try to take the path of least resistance against that Liberator. Uh, he's getting some good hits in with those uh, Hellions and Roaches. However, our resistance to this... As the Pesosa's links come in, they're going to clean this up. And they're going to come poking around here at STVs and Marines. Uh, Liberator taking another position here. Going to get a couple of roaches in this fight. Uh, one shot, two shots. And they're going to move on into the main base. That has been has been walled off. Uh, there is a bit of a wall here. And uh, they'll have to stand under the Liberator while they continue to work these SCVs down. And they're going to lose a roach. Maybe two roaches, depending on how fast they move out of this territory. And here come the SCVs to help fend this off. Um... Uh, the Ling's actually opting to stay in that fight, and they come over here to the Mineral Patch and continue to clean things up with Asmodian. Asmodian taking a lot of damage here, down to 19 workers, um, and that number uh, going to end itself at 16 as this last uh, last couple links here gets a lot of work done. Oh, 15 workers remaining to 38. A supply of 21 to 44 army is matched, but behind this, Pesosa expanded. Pesosa dropped in some spore crawlers because he knows this liberator might come and get some additional damage and kind of taking up those weak spots, putting down more gas, and he macroing behind this. Absolutely knows he has the advantage here. Uh, he's going to take that opportunity to build a stronger and better, better army. Now, more marines being built. Um, he's decided, opted to go full, uh, uh, opted to move more into bio, pulling in Cyclone since he's got this reactor in the factory. Cyclones do a great job against the roaches we've seen. Hey, little SCV. You've seen battle. You don't want to move. You don't want to mine. You want to stay where it's safe. This, however, this Liberator is going to go across the map and see if it can't return some of this damage. Um, this is... He's going to run into a couple spores and looks like one, two, one, two, and... Yeah, it's about two, a little less than two queens per base. Uh, he's going to meet with quite a resistance over here, but he is building himself a, a nice little fortification on this side. Um, two Liberators and a handful of Cyclones will push back uh, immediate army. The Queen did spot it, get a couple hits off on this Liberator as it continues to try to work its way around. Now, it is going to set up into a nice spot here. Uh, this Spore Crawler kind of out of position, needs to be behind the middle line as these Queens come to clean it up. But a Queen sitting in that position is going to fall to a Liberator if it doesn't move. Uh, this Queen... A little bit of missed micro there. Uh, needs to find that safe spot, that, that, that good spot right there as the spore crawler moves out. And the queen backs up a little too late, uh, missing an opportunity to kill. But the spore crawler looks like he's going to finish it off, being set up in an unfortunate position here as queens and roaches uh, move to intercept, being morphed into ravagers. Uh, down here back at the Terran side, he is now working on stem. He's working on getting that full bio army going. A uh, little supply blocked right now. He hadn't had to worry about supply blocks for a while. He lost so many SCVs, uh, lost so much army, and he's still behind in workers. A total of 25, 10, only 10 created uh, since the attack. Actually, none in creation right now. Uh, a little behind in his macro potential, uh, whether he's just deciding to save his minerals to build up his army uh, in response to a counter push, or is just mis, uh, mis, -macroing, mis microing a bit. But he is already 25 down to can't 
continue to make those simple mistakes. There we go, two SCVs being produced. Um, spine, cr uh, spine crawlers being created to protect this, uh, to protect the hatchery and this third base down here. Uh, army is just starting to be uh, produced. He was definitely macroing up, getting his army up. He's got good number of overlords here, kind of creating a line of vision. Uh, and over here again in the corner to try to spot any any drops or movement. Still got this overlord down here. Is actually uh, both both third base opportunities are being, I uh, will say, a pooed on. Preventing uh, Asmodian from taking a third when he wants it. That's going to push him a little even farther behind as you watch his... Actually, you know what? His first base not mining out because he doesn't have the SCV saturation he needs. Um, only two gases, and he's not producing out of all facilities. You see Asmodian's kind of falling apart here. Uh, Pesosa is is definitely uh, taking it, uh, taking full advantage so far of his lead. Uh, doing everything he can to, to keep it. And actually playing a little safe, I would like to see... Uh, an attempt at kind of closing this game out as the supply tells the story. 72 to 129. More roaches coming out here for Persosa. Still working on uh, plus one, plus one. About to finish that up. Uh, would make for a good timing attack. Another hatchery, uh, ma macro hatch coming down. That gives him five sources of larvae as the queen uh, are really focusing on getting this creep spread out in all directions. Now this is the real vision. This is the real power of Zerg. Now we do have some movement down here. Uh, it looks like uh, Asmodian has decided it's time to do what he can. Now, take a look at the army value uh, and the kind of the army he's working with here. If he gets a good liberator positioning, if he makes real good use of these four cyclones and keeps his bio kind of uh, under these under these medevacs, he can get a lot of good damage done. Uh, whether or not he wants to elevate her up anywhere or try to come back from the back, it does look like he's going to come right at the front. Um, and the army of Pesosa is already in position in a good spot to take out, well, I'd say Liberators, uh, but he's going to split up and try to sandwich his army a bit, uh, kind of getting reinforcements as they move in. There goes the stem. Uh, Medivac's doing a great job. Uh, actually, uh, Asmodian kind of taking the fight he wants to. Uh, probably the best fight he could have taken. Uh, there was a little bit of move command there as I say that. And Pesosa takes game one. Ooh. Really a uh, heavily dominated fight there by Pesosa. Um, and we move on to the next one, which is Neon Violet Square. Now this one has all those nice little, I love them, those nice little holographic squares in the middle that make you zigzag around it. So, we'll see if Pesosa can continue the absolute domination that we saw in Game 1. So. Alright, ladies and gentlemen... Spawning in the top left-hand corner, the Green Terran, Hasmodian. And in the bottom right-hand corner, the Red, the Zerg, Pesosa. Hoping to close this game out 2-0 and secure his win uh, in this set. And hopefully make it out of the group into the round of 16. So we do have a double gas cancel. Uh, so two more, two more um, drones on the way. He's now at 16 out of 14 supply, opting for spawning pool for 16 pool. Uh, let's see where he goes with this. Uh, on the other end, one gas and a barracks. It looks like gas first, so potentially reapers coming out real early and in mass number. Oh, excuse me. Or, uh, an, you know, I'd, I'd say multiple reapers. Um, not quite enough uh, gas, I'd say, for a, a real heavy and fast uh, mech push but we'll see and if we take a look at the yeah just where you put it last time the rally point was just at the base of the map taking a quick look over at Zerg he's about to finish up the spawning pool now it was spawning pool first followed by hatch this is a gasless hatch um, so could be looking for some early roach ravenger pressure here uh, but time will tell and my experience will tell as I call And Simodian going over here for an expansion, so nothing cheeky here. Uh, just an early gas. Um, we'll see what he does with this gas. Actually, this is um, whether he uses it or he uh, 
uses it later, uses it early, uses it for a mid-timing push. Uh, we do have six slowlings coming across the map now. Gas still not started uh, for Pesosa. I expect this to be more of a poke as this wall uh, should be up by then. He may get a cancel on this command center. Uh, and there comes the Reaper. Uh, awesome skin for that Reaper. He looks absolutely buff as he's moving around. Uh, and he's actually staying long enough, it looks like, to defend from the Ling attack. There has been no scouting. There has not been an SCV sent over. So he's potentially waiting for these Lings. And if he... Uh, there's a point where he feels like he's safe. He may move across and do the scouting he wants to get. But it does look like the Lings are going to crash in rather than wait. Um, and they're going to get this around. And there's the Reaper. Absolutely de uh, what Asmodian didn't want to do. Um, he's going to lose his command center. He's going to be forced to cancel. There is nothing in production right now. So he's working on that reactor. Um, two SCVs sitting there. He's kind of in, in tactical... Uh, I'd say tactical strategy realignment mode where he's trying to figure out the best course of action as he's got a, a couple oh there we go cancel the last second he's got a couple marines going now waiting to the last second is good it, it keeps them those links down there focused on your natural rather than trying to break down your door when you don't have forces um, but he still has lost a natural um, and it does look like Pesos is going to come home and macro up three bases uh, heavy production of uh, heavy production of drones, and at the moment he's a little safe. Now we're gonna see uh, two pair, oh, not two pairs of hellions, but uh, looks like cyclones coming out of here. A cyclone hellion coming out of here for Asmodian. There goes command center being crafted on the top. So not only is he um, gonna be significant behind on his natural, he's got to fly it down there. It, it really takes you completely out of your pacing. You have a plan, you have a build order, and now you're you're kind of off. You have excess minerals you don't know what to do with. Uh, your gas spending is a little off. And you notice he got some early gas. He's about 100 and... He's out, he reached about 170, and he's really got to find a place to start dumping these. Um, cyclones are a good place to do it. And those are some extra... Absolutely excellent Hellion sounds. Uh, I don't think skins do sounds, but... I could be wrong. I do put the sound down all the time. I have increased the sound just for this cast. Um, we do have some text, uh, some switching going on. It is double factory. Looks like Hellion and Cyclones being pushed across. Very fast, very mobile, and capable of dealing with a wide variety of things Zerg can throw at him, such as roaches, as the roach warren's been in development for a little bit. Double queens up here at the third, single queen at the natural, um, and one queen down here. And it looks like he wants to focus on his creep spread. Uh, to the north gives him a lot of extra vision gives him time to prepare if someone's trying to come down and snipe his third and he is working on his creep spread down here with the creep trimmers uh, solely in the middle a couple marines here are going to deny uh, any significant scouting from this over what he is going to see that this base is down to the natural and what he's going to miss I, I don't say miss uh, I'd say he was going to miss the factories but there are so many factory units here that the only answer could be uh, that he is going mech in response to this you see him putting down uh, some more gases up here in his, well, yeah, just finishing his gases in his natural. Uh, going for plus one range, Zerg speed, and plus one uh, Zergling. So kind of a, a interesting mixture. He's going for plus one for both his range and his melee. Uh, we may see a focus on, on Roach Zerg, trying to, to split the difference there. Uh, sadly, though, we also have the split counter uh, with Asmodian. Uh, Hellions for the Zerglings and um, Cyclones for the Roaches. So we'll see if this has any how this battle comes out. He's moving across at a good at a good moment. We kind of watched the army production. A couple Roaches just finished up, but if we see a round of uh, drones, uh, that could put Pisos in a very dangerous position. But we actually see 30 Lings being created. Uh, Asmodian on the other end just putting down a few gas. He's actually letting his Asmodian's letting his minerals hit a thousand. Right now, 1,370 uh, 70 gas. This is the there's that early gas he didn't need. This is him really focusing on this fight and not doing what he needs to. Hellbats um, transform. Actually, a lot of move command going on. He's got a he's got a concave right now and a decent wall for what he needs. But these queens are going to work as there is an army um, hiding somewhere. Take a look at the unit stat. Um, oh no. Those 30 Zerglings he morphed earlier are all dead, and actually this, this attack, this morphing into Hellbats, did a significant amount of damage, but there are nine Roaches in the production tab. Four Cyclones being made on the other side of the map. Still, uh, both of these players with a significant uh, number of bank, and they really focus on 
clearing out this fight and the danger from it. Uh, we see these queens and these roaches. Uh, depending on the transfusers, there we go. A couple more roaches coming out, and they're going to push away this cyclone, and they're going to live another day. Uh, let's take a look at the damage report, though. Coming out for the better, I believe this is Pososa with 56 workers. Uh, he's got a steady production of army. He's continuing to macro up. There's more upgrades. Plus one, plus one finished. Plus two, plus two on the way. We're back at home. Asmodian's really got to find a, a way to use all these minerals. And it looks like he spotted it, too, as he's making three more factories. Uh, there's the armory. It's not doing anything yet. Um, would like to see it uh, starting up with the upgrades. Um, we are seeing a third base just started over here, too. Kind of in the small but safe uh, third base. If we notice a small difference over here. Oh, must have caught something. Uh, Zerg is just now taking this as a fourth base rather than the third opting earlier to take the more dangerous third base with the fully saturated bases, feeling he could defend it as long as he can get this creep spread moving up here to the top. All right, looks like the Zerglings are going to move out, see what they can get done. A, uh, there goes the barracks, the ultimate scout. They're going to take down these rocks, uh, giving themselves more paths and opportunities to move forward. That way they're not restricted in their movement to these little squares. Now, these squares do a... They have the benefit of preventing surrounds. Zerglings are unable to get uh, as good of a surround on their enemy if they kind of meet here. And the Cyclones use these barriers uh, for defense. Now, in the same way, uh, really just all the Zerg units really perform the, the space and the swarming. Whereas uh, Mech Army is a little more, a little smaller. Could use the defense of those extra walls to their advantage. So, he's taken him down. Hey, it's Pisosa has joined us in the chat. Um, so far, this is an excellent series of games. You've done a, a fantastic job, and it looks like... You are still dominating your second game against Asmodian. Uh, but we do have a scan. He's going to see a lot of um, a lot of <laughs> bases he built. So he's actually going to spend a second scan, kind of seeing uh, Hydro's Den. He's going to see both Evolution Chambers. They're actually about to finish up 2-2. Two, two. Um, we'll see if Pesosa wants to time this in with anything, or if he's just moving out here to secure a fourth, excuse me, fifth base, uh, fourth fully mineable base as compared to this much smaller uh, but safer uh, fourth base he took a minute ago. Taking a look at his opponent, he's building up an army. He's getting a force here. He's feeling a little comfortable. Still just Cyclones and Hellions. But we do have a... Actually, excuse me. We have a couple tanks here as uh, he put down Tech Lab with all those excess minerals. And looks like he's trying to get rid of all that. He, he did actually successfully get rid of most of his gas now. Under 200 at the uh, sub-10 minute mark. Uh, do you have a lot of extra gas for Pesosa? Um, I'd like to see where he decides to tech switch. He is researching uh, Hydralis range. Uh, he's morphing into the Hive, so he might want to go into his Tier 3 upgrade at this point. Still excellent vision, just like last time. Pesosa has almost a wall of information all the way up and down to spot any drops. A small, small hole and a very small weakness here. Um, but something that's... Uh, it looks like it's going to be remedied as he continues to push this wall uh, down in this direction. We do have simultaneous move-outs. Only a small Ling force trying to, again, gather information. Something that Pesosa has been very excellent at so far. Kind of knowing where his uh, where his enemy's at, where the army has, uh, blocking off all paths at least, and, and knowing if his opponent's going to move out. Some Ling's coming back home as they, they see the army moving on to the creep. And it looks like he's going to try to clear out some of this, some of this creep. Now this is nice to clear out, but he missed, he did miss the spawnable creep tumor. He's going to set up uh, looks like a line of tanks here to help secure his push. Uh, but coming back from the rear, kind of positioning behind these tanks where they're going to be a little more unsecure. Uh, Pesosa's doing kind of a wraparound. Now these cyclones are doing excellent work to take down the, the third, uh, but Ling swarm into the back. Um, actually a very precarious position to be in. I'm not sure how he wants to collapse in on this, but he does come from two sides attempting to sandwich him out. Tanks can only shoot in one direction, and they have to choose. So it looks like this is exactly the kind of force that Pesos is needed to clean this up. This is an overwhelming force, and Asmodian's entire army falls to the Zerg. And back home, he's got a Thor, a tank, and a Hellion. Maybe they're going to be the hero units. Maybe they're going to help close this out. Uh, Pesos is already being a little cheeky. He's got the gold. He's got uh, one of the potential fifth bases here uh, being gooped out and he's getting a nice army he's clicking at home 2-2 uh, two, two is finished or actually been finished for quite some time and he's getting a bit of a bank um, whether he's restricted by larva at the moment he's hoping for uh, to, to to re up very quickly focusing on getting those hatcheries uh, started again 
Actually, a good saturation here on his fifth. He started a sixth base down on the gold. And nothing, nothing but momentum for our Zerk here right now. As he's moving out. He's got nothing but a wall to contend with. Pulling back. Actually, only sending a couple things here to get a good sky. He's going to see that this base is not up yet. Um, he's still sitting on thir uh, three bases. As Modian, uh, mining out of his main, mining out of his uh, natural. And as always, absolutely uh, starting off mined out on this third base back here. Uh, oversaturated. Some of those workers uh, could be maneuvered around or starting a new base. These links are actually going to prevent um, any immediate expansion. It's going to have to be here. He knows it. And he's going to start running out of uh, minerals really quickly. We take a look at the income. We can see almost 700 minerals per minute. Uh, oh, excuse me. I say in Asmodian's favor, but there must have been a series of mule drops. There we go. A series of mule drops there to uh, bring those number up. Once those mules stop, we should see it. We do see some uh, transfer, some long-distance mining happening here as this base up here finishes for Pesosa. Uh, taking a look at the tab. Baneling speed is coming out. Uh, looks like he's finally starting plus one armor. He's focusing on plus one melee uh, for his lings before before the range. Looks like he wants to get those surrounds uh, on those tanks, on those units, and really kind of hold them in place and do a lot of that damage that way. Oh, a little bit of a stutter there. We do have a movement over here from the Zerg. He's got so much of this map in creep. Um, he's going to know where his enemy's coming uh, as... And with what? Um, all we have over here are sensor towers. They're they're a little safe. They give them a little bit of warning, but this creep is unbeatable. As a couple links come up here uh, to see what they can get done and absolutely get fried uh, by blue flame hellbats, tanks, and thors. They're actually having a hard time maneuvering around all of these supply depots, and we're going to see a big split in the army. Um, if he doesn't gather these up soon... Oh, if he doesn't gather these up soon, they could find themselves disadvantaged. They really want the entire force here to meet. As the army supply is relatively similar at this time. I think Asmodian's done a pretty good job of coming back. But if he loses this army, he's going to lose a lot of momentum. He's going to lose a lot of firepower. Um, we'll take a look as he moves forward with Hellbats, Ravens, Liberators, Tanks, and Thors. Uh, while on the other end, having Brood Lords and Corruptors have joined the fight. Um, that's what that plus one melee was for. It was for the broodlings, and he's morphing more broodlords now. But by the time this army gets here, that's what they're going to have to face. He's throwing down several spines to help slow down the advance. He's really going to push a line with these tanks. And these tanks are great, but broodlings are free. And this gold base is uh, going to come under immediate attack uh, as a couple corruptors come out uh, and move back. Broodlords coming in. They're going to get a couple broodlings released, and then they're going to back up. Or they should back up. Uh, looks like the Hydra Sarks are coming to meet the forward army, and these broodlings are staying, or these broodlords are staying in the fight, doing absolutely fantastic damage. The army actually firing, the tanks firing on their own army. Uh, I do believe friendly fire is still a thing, as these tanks are forced to retreat. Uh, just a handful of broodlords pushing back the entire army, as Pesosa can confidently move into his enemy's base now. Um... Uh, you may have cleared out the creep, but it took so long to get there that broodlords came out and utterly wrecked your day. Um... Go, go, go. All right, Pesosa opting to wait for his Broodlords. Uh, he does not want to engage with the full force of his army, but these Broodlords are going to get into a, a decent position. They're going to start popping away at this command center. Um, anyway, learned a little something today. You see plus one coming for both ranged and melee. Your enemy may be taking a look at Broodlords. Now, a couple Corruptors uh, coming out here to defend the Broodlords. They're in an excellent spot to do it. They're going to get a couple Broodlords uh, while they're at it. And Pesosa is going to take game number two absolutely definitively. So first up was Asmodian and Pesosa taken cleanly 2-0. So let me write that down. So our next game is going to be Tool versus Surreal. Tool sitting at 28 ELO and Surreal at 27. This should actually be a really close game. Um, all ELO considered, at least. Um, and again, this is only representative of their performance in the All Invitational. Um, so take my word for what it is. Uh, but this is a ZVZ. Uh, right? Yes, this is a ZVZ. And the first one is on Neon Violet Square. So we're going to see the same map with these wonderful two players. Just gonna load this in.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, spawning. In the bottom right-hand corner, in purple, all ins tool. In the top left-hand corner, in the green, with the skins, all ins surreal. Immediately going into a spawning pool at a, at 12. So, 12 pool potential here. Um, Tool just did a gas cancel. And it looks like Surreal may be, getting, may be getting cheeky. I've been wrong. I've been wrong often. He may decide to go into full-on economic build. But as it stands right now... He's being aggressive. And it's not necessarily going to be scouted. Every moment that Tool takes to get his own spawning pool or get this information will put him at a, a big, little bit of a bigger disadvantage. Not something he can't defend, not something uh, utterly devastating. Uh, but of course, lings are uh, essential, right? Uh, to defending lings. Uh, first couple lings are being morphed, six of them coming out. And it looks like he's currently got him waypointed down here and he's going to take his hatch so uh, eight lings uh, total and is if is he should move these across the map to do something with them there we go uh, and what he's really aiming to do here is get this cancel um, not much not necessarily potential here for a uh, all kill he's opted just for a slower hatchery and an opponent to take his in, in an effort to take his opponent's hatchery um, that will give him a slight economic advantage. It won't finish off his opponent. We're not seeing a full-on, a full-on 12 pool cheese here with flood, uh, floods of ling after ling. Um, nicely, nice though is this is going to take surreal or sorry, it's going to take tools. Uh, tools got to decide now whether to let this finish and whether how he can defend it. Uh, four lings and a spine crawler coming up, but that's going to take a while. So he lets this finish. So he's not going to get any cancellation money. He's got to, He's pulling the drones now. Um, to save this. Now, this is significantly worse than letting the hatchery go, depending on whether he loses drones, or he's just buying time for links. Because once these six links come down here, it's going to be another story. And this is going to be absolutely the dance here, as uh, Surreal is still behind in workers um, on the other side, but he's going to continue to get the pick off of the hatchery. More actual lings being sent across the map now. Uh, Spinecrawler finishing up top, so he's not going to get anything other than this hatchery, but that may be all he needs, as he actually lets some of his links get, uh, loses a couple links to broodlings. Uh, I should have pulled back a little earlier, uh, but this Spinecrawler getting a good position at this ramp, and a couple links coming down. Uh, he's going to actually get some of the reinforcements that were spawning at the natural. He's going to clean those up, and behind this, uh, he's actually forcing more links out of tool uh, than is than may or may not be necessary. Uh, actually, he's going to get here. He, he gets his queen. Um, that is a really big deal. Um, it looks like the queen and the lings and all the king's horses and all the king's men will push it back. Uh, and behind this, Surreal has been focusing on workers. 22 workers, 17. A little oversaturated here. I'd like to see him uh, fix fix his mineral line a bit. Maybe start a gas as speed for tool is just about to finish and a counterattack could be devastating. Um, he does have a lot of excess lings that he didn't need. He's gonna... He knows he has to do some damage. He has to get up here and get something done. Queen's in a very good position here to defend any big forces coming up. Uh, any big counterattack trying to make it into the main. Um, but he's not making a lot of links behind this. Just one one spine crawler that's going to be in good position to hit at the base of the ramp of the Queen's and give the drone something to dance around. Um, but these are speed links, and they're coming up the ramp right now. Oh, absolutely great positioning there by the Queen. Uh, kind of a... I don't know if it was an undercommitment or uh, from Tool or not, if that was the right call. Uh, whether or not he wanted to get this around, but we are going to see a tech switch into Roaches. And there's where this gasless part starts to come into play. He's been a little, he's been a little bit of a better position um, because he opted to, to wait for the gas. He's, he's not wasting any t time on speed because slings aren't going to be his main force. Something that uh, could have been dangerous. Uh, if his opponent was uh, being similarly aggressive, but with the speed. But now we have uh, Banelings coming in. One Baneling is not enough to kill drones, so one drone is going to take a hit. As a couple more Banelings come in to try to get some good connections. Um, absolutely strong hits there. There's about four or five drones. As a couple drones come in here to join the dance, uh, kind of marking off Lings. Uh, marking Lings, excuse me. Uh, and the Queens are going to push them off, and these Lings are going to be able to mine again. Now, behind this... 
both of them are droning up. It's kind of this forcing, trying to force them to, to overcommit to, to Lings, overcommit to Banes, uh, just in case this attack is continuing. But we are going to have Roaches now, and Roaches change this dynamic uh, a lot. They change it quite a bit there. And we're going to see a couple Roaches coming in to support these Queens. Three Queens on the board. Not a full wall on the ramp anymore. Uh, kind of out of position. Uh, and depending on uh, how Tool decides to play this, that, that could be dangerous. A couple defensive banes, I like it. Kind of does, uh, prevents uh, a lot of the damage from a counterattack. Uh, if Surreal were just to, to push it. But now Surreal is going to see these links kind of hanging out the third. He's going to have a heads up. He's getting Queens in a better position. Uh, the Spine Crawler in position to defend at least the Evolution Chamber. Uh, but Roach's shoot out of range and can easily defend this wall. He looks like he's going to push his opponent uh, back home. Very slow Banelinks. Hey, Banelinks. Waddle, 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 waddle. Right, gathering his forces up here again. Looks like kind of a, a back and forth trying to decide whether he wants to commit to a push or not. We're seeing some more Lings being produced while simultaneously producing drones. Um, trying to stay a little aggressive, trying to keep his opponent on his toes and eke out whatever army he can. Uh, but we do see Surreal is consistently building kind of both drones and roaches. Uh, keeping the response uh, kind of appropriate. You know, can almost never have... Like, you can use these queens all game. I'd like to see... I think I'd like to see more... Uh, creep spread here with this many queens. Start using some of that energy. Or queue up a lot of... Um, a lot of larvae. There you go. So... Back here, let's go ahead and find these, find this army. Uh, most of the Lings are back home. It feels like he expects a counterattack or a push anytime now. Um, on the production tab, you can see um, Tool is continuing to produce drones, uh, going into Spire now that Roaches have entered the map. Um, and both of these opponents have been playing very cautiously the entire time. Uh, this queen possibly getting an overload here. So there goes the commitment to Roaches as Roach Speed was just dropped. This Overlord looks like he's going to live another day. Um, but he does know his opponent's got a third and he needs to... There we go. He needs to take it and he's decided to go right over to the gold as he begins to push his creep spread uh, and try to connect it to him. Uh, interesting choice here by Surreal. He is a little bit ahead and Worker is a little bit ahead in... Um, mineral collection speed. But that might, that might change now as his opponent's kind of working on his... He's got his third base up and going. Um, more drones were being committed uh, by Surreal. As Queens are, are taking up all the defensive positions. Queens on one side, Roaches on the other. Great wall here. Going to take a lot to get into that. Now, the number of Mutalisks here uh, will tell it all. Uh, how much damage he thinks he wants to get done. His Mutalist enters the field, unbeknownst to Surreal, who does not have any Spore Crawlers in position. They can come in and do a fantastic amount of damage. Now, the Queens, all the way down here, can make it, uh, can maneuver pretty well in the creep, but they are still not the fastest, and these Mutalists are going to have a good time uh, poking in, if controlled well. Now, when they're spotted, is going to be the questions we have a move out right now. So they're going to meet the first queen over here. Um, how many queens to Amuta? More than three. As uh, all the roaches actually all armied over in this direction. Um, maybe expecting a, a counter push. Or a little bit of misclicking. We do have a nice, a wonderful line. It's like a conga line of overlords. Um, just in case he really needs vision. Right here. Um, but we do have a third base. Uh, the third base is up and going on the... Uh, on the gold base now. Uh, pretty soon he should start to have a... There we go. You can see it down there. Two, three hundred. Mineral advantage on his uh, on his opponent. And if he does a, a drone transfer like he does here, uh, it's going to get even even faster. Um, even faster, even faster. But we do have a half base down there that was just taken uh, by Tool as he brings in his Mutalist to take some pokes over at these roaches. He's going to go home. Up on the production tab for Tool, you do see Hydralisks, and um, Hydralisks 
and more Mutalis. So Hydralis Den and Mutalis being produced, as well as plus one air, uh, melee, uh, ground armor, and Bane Link Speed just finishing. Uh, on the other end, Tool is bringing out his own Mutas, maybe some good Muta Muta air battles as he's got um, Overlord Speed, as well as plus one air going. Plus one air just now finishing for Tool. He was a little bit ahead of the game. So he's going to take any equally sized Muta battles right now. Um, which looks like, um, we will get to see right now. And we won't get to see. As the Lings come in, and they're gonna try to prevent him from getting his fourth base. Actually pushed away by the Mutalisks, um, at, at just the right moment. As they come back to reinforce. On the other one, we had a fight going. We have Roaches coming in on Sewell's third base. Looks like he's gonna clean this up. Couple more Roaches down here. Trying to get a couple drones on their way down. Um, taking out their broodlings, uh, and they're going to have to face the mutalists uh, from all angles. However, a, a slightly large mutalist force coming in at a better angle here, uh, actually going to maneuver right over a little bit of Miss Micro there, as he's going to miss a few mutalists um, in the process. And there's a GG. And Purple Zerg takes... wait, no, Green Zerg. Purple victory screen. Uh, Green Zerg Surreal takes the first game with that excellent push out with just the right number of Mutalists and an absolutely dominating number of Roaches. Uh, Mutalists do win the Roach game in the right numbers as long as um, you don't let the Roaches get into your base in so many numbers and so great in numbers that you're not going to kill them fast enough, which is what we were facing right there. Um, but game number two will be on Blackwater LE, and we're getting to that right now, right away. Take another sip. Oh. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, spawning in the top left-hand corner, the Purple Zerg, down one match. It is Tool. In the bottom right-hand corner, Excellent early game pressure. Ty uh, tech switches at just the right moment and plenty of queens to go. It is surreal. Alright, now the Overlord pushing his way across the map to catch up with his buddy who is also pushing his way across the map. 17 supply hatches. For both people. There we go. There's a hatch for Tool, a hatch for Surreal. Absolutely mirroring each other at the moment. Tool was a little faster on the drone production. As he draws, they both drop a gas at approximately the right time. At approximately the same time. I'll pull it up approximately the same time. Absolutely mirror builds here, going for a very economic focus, very safe build. Um, looks like this drone's going to come out here, and he's going to see what he can scout. Am I? I'm I'm at the right speed, right? Okay, yeah, I'm totally at the right speed. <laughs> that would be a shame if that happened like two times in a cast, but I think once it happens the first time, it fixes itself. I'm not pressing pause buttons, right? Good, everything's still recording, everything's still on stream, and all y'all are still hanging out with me. All y'all. All y'all? All y'all. All right, let's follow you. All right, looks like drone's gonna come up here and take a look. Is he gonna pay, uh, move around? He's gonna move around these crystals. He's gonna look at things, and what he's gonna see? He's gonna see what's the same thing that's going on his base. He's gonna see, I was gonna say 16 workers on the gas, uh, on the minerals with a couple on the gas, but um, oops, excuse me. Uh, Surreal has stopped mining gas at exactly 100. And what does he want to do with this 100? It's got a very specific purpose for it, or else he wouldn't have pulled the drones back off. Uh, and looks like the answer was speed. He is opting for speed this time. He's not opting for, um, just that immense gasless roach focus. Uh, Queen is going to come over here and try to chase this Overlord. It's going to prevent a uh, little bit of information. Tool's a little bit ahead on on speed, but he is continuing to collect gas. So whether that means Banelings or not, uh, time will tell as his Overlord uh, may have seen the last of his days. 
All right, Link's coming across the map. Nice slow Ling's about to get their speed boost, or may get their speed boost uh, very shortly. As the third base goes down for Tool. So opting for a little bit of pressure over uh, being economic. Uh, if he can get some, some damage here, I kind of put his opponent on the back foot. Uh, but we are going to see speed coming. Uh, speed's good, but the numbers are going to make up for it uh, as Tool is forced to pull in uh, pull in drones, uh, forcing Surreal to reset, get to a better position, and then resume the chase. Speed not quite done uh, for the Green Zerg, and he's going to have to pull out of this fight. Not something he can he can win. And now he's got to worry a little bit about counter pressure for some time, as you see him put eight more uh, links in production. He's going to drop a spine, knowing that he's a little open to the pressure. Uh, Banelings being morphed in here for Tool. Uh, defensively or offensively, time will tell as he starts to move out, actually. Here we go. At a minimum, this counter pressure is to be expected. He knows his opponent um, was put into a uh, relatively rough position there at the end. Uh, lost a few more links than he could, but he's got to know when he gets over, he's not going to see a third in this position. Uh, and the spine crawler should finish up just about the time the pressure is, unless he catches Surreal out of position and moving across the map. Uh, there we go. And he's actually going to catch him morphing in Banelings. Um, and Surreal is actually going to deny this pressure, and then he's going to have to deal with some Banelings. Uh, very dangerous to do, attack Banelings. Um, that you didn't see more, because sometimes that happens. As we have five Banelings now trying to make their way over here and get some drone kills. We do have a third that was in, been in production for a little bit of time. There are the reinforcing links. We're going to help these Banelings find uh, potential connections here in the drone line. Uh, as Lings get the surround on the spy, spy crawlers and the drones taking the weird uh, kind of a roundabout there oh man those connections uh one more banley is going to finish up with finish off the rest of those that was 16 16 workers absolutely what he did not need to see right there and that banley exploding just in the radius going to finish off every single one of the workers that was behind uh, this mineral patch uh interesting to see that he chose to uh, run those around a circle rather than pulling into the main uh but, Absolutely a huge counterattack uh, was going on at the same time. A Baneling hit, uh, blowing out most of those forces. Um, really having an interesting game here of aggression, and it's going to come down to a lot of Baneling hits and connections as they pass. The armies pass silently in the night. Um, they are going to see each other. Uh, looks like Surreal was on move command, and he wants to stay there. Is continuing to keep the fight on this side of the map. Uh, excuse me, Tool was on move command, wanting to keep the fight on this side of the map, but Surreal opting to maybe go for a trade, maybe try to force some of uh, Tool's army to respond to this. Uh, we are going to see Tool uh, turning around just now. Exactly, exactly what uh, Surreal was hoping. He wants to have the fight on this side. He's got, he got the natural, um, but he's going to lose a couple queens because of it. 100%, uh, I think, worth it. After getting an entire uh, base full of, full of drones and then getting that base. Um, so down here, he's going to have to remake that soon. But he is building up. Nope, nope they're both getting some drones. They are both building some drones. Uh, here we go. Tool, a little bit of move command there. Uh, has now caught the lings. I got a good surround here. Um, it's it's just he can't. Surreal can no longer build uh, at the pace that Tool can. He does not have the same larva production. He's not three bases. There's a couple... There are a couple of drones down here. Uh, that's just not drones. Uh, Bane Link's being morphed in. And it looks like he's going to get this third, uh, unless there's an answer. Uh, a couple links going over here to maybe uh, faint, faint an attack. No, he's sending, he's sending links. He's trying to take the fight back to the other side, but he has lost a third in the process. Um, all, all Tool has to do here is defend it, and he'll even up this game. All he has to do is keep this attack from doing absolutely anything. He's just got to bring in more links. He has more than twice the army supply. He just has to make Baneling connections just like that. He comes down here, he finds nothing more than a queen, um, and he's not even going to get that. Such an army of lings, such a flood of lings, and now they just need to be on the other side of the map, and this fight will be theirs. There is only one base and a handful of larvae for his opponent. Uh, a Baneling nest just now being produced. I don't think we destroyed a Baneling nest, so... Um, Quite a late Bailey Nest. This is a, a move of desperation. Hoping to get some great connections. Uh, he's got his queens in a good position to block the ramp. Um, theoretically, if he gets godlike Bailey connections and forces his opponent um, back home, 
this could be a uh, this could be a chance. Don't let me write him off. Um, as he goes and checks, there's no third. He's come up here. He's gonna see a massive number of queens. That I mean, oh, they're gonna start finding holes. As one Ling made it through, and the transfuses are actually doing a fantastic job. That's going to do a fantastic job of staying alive, buying so much time for Banelings. Uh, two queens now at the gate, uh, running out of transfuses, running out of health, uh, very low on energy. They're going to get this around. Those Banelings are going to morph right on the... No. Oh, man. As the Lings continue to come in here, uh, decent Baneling hits. Decent? I, I didn't even see whose Baneling that was. Um, as these lings are trying to play a dancing game, and there's a GG from Surreal, and Tool ties up the game series, or this series of games, 1-1. One, one. And we're going to game three. Alright, this last one is on Black Pink. We've seen a lot of this map in the series. Uh, we actually seen a lot of the same maps. So it looks like everybody's vetoing the same maps. Uh, we see a lot of Black Pink, we see a lot of the Neon Violet, we see a lot of black water, um, and we're going to see it again. So, spawning in the bottom left-hand corner, the purple Zerg taking it with his Ling pressure, great Baneling hits, and overall tactical prowess. It is Tool. Spawning in the top right-hand corner, taking the first game with roaches and absolute domination, it is Surreal. Alright, so Surreal looks like he's doing uh, what he did the f Oh man, the games are all running together now. Um, he did 12 pool and it does look like Tool is going to uh, go hatch first. So we, I believe we saw a, a reverse mirror of this last game and if Tool can protect his natural, um, he'll find himself in a better, slightly better position. And on the other side, if Surreal can take this natural from him, he'll find himself in an advantageous position. Now, all this depends, of course, on what follows. Um, are we going to see uh, Hatchery go down? Are we going to see a constant flood of Lings? Is he going to switch out of Lings uh, into drones? Is he going to keep up of the pressure, or is he going to be satisfied with a couple of hits? So, here are the first six Lings. We see two more in production. We should see... Um, at least two to four more after that. There we go. Uh, for at least some uh, moderately sustained pressure to ensure he gets this hatchery. Um, oh, man. Tool cancels his own hatchery. Um, and recreates it. I don't... He... Oh, gosh. He's got to feel really rough right now. Um, that was... Probably almost definitely not on purpose. So... On top of this, he's going to see the Lings flood in here. Uh, this is absolutely have to be demoralizing. He cancels his own hatch. Um, probably a missed key. Uh, not something he meant to do. And now, on top of getting it canceled, he's fun. Uh, he it's canceled a second time. And he's forced to make it uh, a third time. He's got a couple Lings in production to help fight this back. He does not have a spine crawler. He's going to be short uh, 200 minerals more. Uh, well, it's, uh, 150 minerals more than he would have been. Uh, because of all those cancellations and all this not mining time. He's got no income coming in right now um, The longer the longer surreal plays this game uh, the more of advantage he's gonna have uh, and here are the drones kind of Walking away now oh, re-engaging into the fight, but still zero mining time for about the last 30 seconds to a minute here for tool um, Absolutely trying to decide how he's going to engage this but behind this his opponent's taking a natural his opponent's getting Queens um, his opponent is doing everything but droning up. Uh, he's just establishing a stronger base of support. Uh, honestly, every second he spends here, every second these drones aren't doing something is in his favor. Uh, it looks like they are going just now to return the minerals. Oh, and a little bit of um, trying to get them to return the minerals without returning all the way back to the natural um, as they decide they, they're going to long distance mine. And it looks like a good split. Actually, about this time, he's his natural is going to come up. Um, and a couple, a couple drones are going to go the long way. So, um, just some rough and very inefficient play. Tool is going to be on the back foot this entire game. He's really going to have to go a long way uh, to make up for it. 
On the other side, we have two queens down here. We have nine workers on the main, a fully saturated, or sorry, fully saturated main plus one. Uh, nine workers, eight workers on the natural, and there goes the roach war, so we should see a gas uh, any moment now as he's starting his roach play. The roach play uh, that won him the first game. Uh, surreal here is 14, 15 supply behind. He is eight workers behind, and he's got a smaller army. Even with, the, here comes the, uh, here comes Surreal again, the poke in to kind of see what's going on. He does see the natural did go up. Even with all that, even with all the workers not mining, he did save this base. He managed to keep it going. Uh, the fight continues up here as these links, um, chase a drone who was trying to make a third, force it, uh, force a cancel on a gas. And he's going to sit here for another 75 minerals. All right, coming up, taking a look over here at Surreal. He's got the Roach Warren up. He is, uh, excuse me, taking a, yeah, taking a look at Surreal. He's got the Roach Warren up. He's got four gases that are just about to complete. Um, he has collected zero gas this game, um, and he's going to take, he just took a third. Uh, not only did he take a third, he's got a, kind of an excess of minerals right now. I'd like to see him start spending. Uh, he's got 250 minerals. As he gets a little bit of gas, he starts collecting from four bases. He's going to easily start this plus one. Uh, plus one range and the uh, and a handful of roaches, but we do have some movement over a tool tools in a good position To do a little bit of damage or at least do some poking he could get this third base It is very open right now. He could peek in get it and run with a little bit of micro Let's see what he does He does connect there is kind of a slow response I'm not seeing any army movement from his opponent So he's gonna get the cancellation and there's 75 minerals and a little bit of lost mining time as it looks like Banelings morphing in to be the defensive response, the response to whatever force it is, but Surreal is just opting to, to kind of wall this out and take the fight on his own terms. He wants Roaches, as we start to see Roaches uh, in the production tab. A couple Banelings are going to uh, get that spine crawler and work their way in, but he's still got these Lings. He didn't throw the Lings away in a fight to protect the third. He's got this wall, and he's going to push this Roach right out there to tank those Baneling hits like it's nobody else's business. And it ain't. He's the roach. He's got it. It's his business. All right. Some good micro going here. Injects. Injects. And he's connecting his third. He's going to want to get out here as soon as he can to make this third. Uh, he is in a great position. Surreal is still in a good position, even though he doesn't have a third going. His opponent's not... Uh, was not entirely focused on drone production. He's not fully saturated uh, on neither his main... Or is natural. So while there are third bases, they aren't working at the level they need to be working. Uh, he's going to come home and prepare for any potential counterattack. Uh, but this is a good chance for Surreal now to think about expanding out, moving across the map even with this absolutely fantastically large army. He's got 700 minerals, uh, 400 gas in the bank, and coming at a, a growing level. He doesn't have he doesn't have his upgrades going. He could use uh, he could uh, he could use road speed as soon as. His layer finishes up, and looks like this drone's decided it's going to need a little backup because there's a Ling there, a cheeky little Ling. Oh. So there's a decoding error. Let's make sure this ain't ain't permanent over here on my stream. I don't think I dropped any. No. Might have just been my preview. All right, so looks like the stream is not dropped, and there's a move out here as Surreal begins to push push across the map. Actually, um, the long way, not uh, opting not to go in the path of all the overlords. Uh, back on the other side, let's take a look at the quick army count here. It is 40 to 29. Uh, Tool has got a series of lings and uh, and banes and a couple roaches are just starting to come out. Uh, on the other end is 20 roaches. Um, excuse me, 20 roaches, 17 lings, and yeah, 20 roaches, 17 lings, always gonna worry. But he doesn't have any 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 banelings. Um, the banelings theoretically get some good hits with these with these slings. Absolutely devastating. That's exactly what he needed to take the best fight possible. And now he's got to come in and close in on this army before reinforcements can get it. Uh, these roaches are actually in a really good position here. Um, they have a good wall. Um, they're forcing the enemy to go around. They're going to take a good fight though as Surreal, yeah, as Surreal continues to stream across the map. Coming in from the other side. Kind of pincering in this Ravager. Avoiding that, uh, that corrosive bile. And he's going to come up here opting to a to not take the base, but come over here and take the additional drones. Um, this Ling is on the chase. He's he, or sorry, this Roach is on the chase. Hero Roach, hoping to get some damage done. Uh, they're going to find themselves the queen, and there's a GG. 
GGW bracket and surreal takes game number two and the first set of the day or the second set of the day Ooh, we're on two all right all right next match is going to be surreal uh, versus Asmodian um, so we take a look at this it was one two make sure I'm doing all these scores so I can reference them but uh Asmodian hasn't won a game in the set yet and surreal just took a 2-1 victory um, quick look at their elo it's going to be 27 to 42 um, it is anybody's game Pesosa actually laid down the smackdown on Asmodi maybe to give him a chance to, to show him what he's worth show him what he's made of so I'm actually looking forward to see if we can see a, a redemption story here as surreal takes on Asmodian all right first oh okay let's check these replays because there were no replays in there so just give me a moment. So we're talking Surreal and Asmodian? No replays. Let's see. I'll go and ask in the chat, and we'll move on to the next game. And if we get them, we will definitely go back and play them. So that means we're moving on to Pasosa versus Tool. Uh, first game, let me look at these. Yep first game is going to be on east watch not a map we saw a lot of um at least not a lot of so far in the all invitational so excited to see something a little different than black light neon and neon genesis or neon lights and blah excuse me biogenesis so hmm. east watch ellie tool versus pesosa now if i uh, 12 to 28 for the elo so it should be a uh, lot. It should be a closer game. Somebody, maybe somebody can put some pressure on Pesosa here. Uh, all right, first up in the best of three, in the bottom left, representing all in, it is Tool. Coming off a 2-0 win against Asmodian, in the yellow, the bright, bright yellow, Pesosa, or Pierre Sosa, with the gas cancel. I'd love to talk to him and pick his brain, because sometimes we see the gas cancel from him, sometimes we see the double gas cancel, sometimes we don't see any gas cancel. Um, he's definitely got the gas cancel range of abilities, and we're seeing a 16 pool go down here. And it looks like we're going to see a 17 hatch from his opponent tool. Okay, so I just got word that... Um, it was a walkover. So Surreal took the walkover with Asmodian. Um, that's a shame. I do like to see, see games played. Um, but now we know. So that would have been a 2-0 walkover. All right, back to the game. So looks like pesosa has got a hatch. Looks like he's got his gas. So he did a drone cancel into a fast spawning pool uh, into hatch gas. So we'll see what this looks like, see what this transforms to. Let's see what kind of timing this evolves uh, evolves to. So he's three workers out right from the eggs into the hatch. So he's got a timing here. I feel like he's got a plan. And seeing that plan come together actually should be a treat. Uh, two links coming out and a queen. On the field now, equal number of drones. We take a look at the the economy; it's about the same. Um, Tools got you know one more overlord. Uh, Pesosa, uh, you know, supply blocked a little bit for a moment there. Um, Queen coming down here to the natural as another one is being made in the main. So I'm actually be paying uh, a lot of attention to see what kind of what flavor 
of Zerg, early game Zerg this is, now that he's taken... Kind of, he took that very specific direction, uh, this order of sequence that you don't see very often. You don't see a pool go down first uh, into uh, kind of an economic safe build, or an economic build. Maybe the pool is there to defend against early ZVZ. Um, we are going to see a Baneling Nest go down. Speed, Baneling Nest, uh, gas has not been pulled. He's def definitely staying on gas. He's maybe planning on a fair number of Banelings. On the other side, Tool just dropped his third. Same pace. If you take a look at the same pace, a little faster, uh, a little faster on the uh, on the speed, uh, which means a little faster on the gas because you know Pesosa did have the spawning pool down first. He's gonna go and drop his own bandling nest. Uh, so kind of taking a look and taking a taking a kind of a survey of everything. Pesosa feels comfortable with two lings, uh, four lings now, as opponent. Had four a little sooner, um, is, but is actually significantly behind in drones. Now, uh, and that's why right there we just saw 12 lings uh, added to the units tab in production. You see six more on the way. It looks like he's trying to add some pressure. So, so actually takes the opposite route, both of them kind of mirroring each other as they go around the bottom and the, and the top of the map. There are four uh, band links being produced. This is going to be a great counter to any any link pressure. And, you know, does this pull Pososa back, or does he commit to taking out his own opponents, or is this going to be a trade? As you see, um, Tool opts to return. Pososa decides to stay. Pososa here, considering the pressure, um, actually causing a couple links, uh, really like the pressure staying to return and continue to hit on the hatchery. And we're going to have a little bit of a fight here as Tool tries to, to claim back his hatchery, but it's going to go down. Uh, on the other side, uh, some Bailey's being morphed up there. Um, Sosa actually manages to save his hatch. Now, whether or not his... Um, in so there was a decision, right? So both these players had to decide whether or not to return home to defend or sacrifice the hatch. But Sosa deciding to stay on the aggressive with Tool deciding to return back to defend. But the defense didn't matter. He still lost it. He didn't bring enough back to attack to stop the fight. There were no Banelings in place. Um, and because he decided to return home, he, he got a couple links for it, but his opponent was able to protect his hatchery. And actually, these rocks are going to be another protection uh, as he doesn't have to focus on that side, uh, at least for a little bit while the uh, while the rocks are in place. Now, a little bit of... say a little bit of move command there as the links find... Uh, go around the bend to stop the hatchery. Now, whether that was AI pathing with the rocks or not, um, I actually don't know if the AI accounts for downed rocks you can't see, in its movement, but he definitely wanted to go to the third. Um, and he wanted to get there clean. Um, that's a pretty good Baneling hit. Too bad I can't check exploded Banelings in their kills. Um, as they're going to actually suicide themselves into the queen a little bit of... Uh, ooh, two Banelings for three, and this queen should be able to take that last Baneling. Um, here he is, Pesosa coming to sandwich him in. Uh, actually trying to get away from the massive Banelings, getting the attacks I can in. These Banelings... Continued pressure from Tool as he is trying to keep his opponent not only on the back foot, but looks like straight up eliminate him. But a great source of uh, a great flood of links here from Pesosa is going to force his opponent back home. Still trying to get these good fights. He's still trying to, 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 to maybe shave a couple links off. Uh, but look at Pesosa, really focused on the environment here is going to try to make this uh, path a little slower. Uh, and he's going to get some great surrounds here. So, so absolutely taking all of the uh, tools links. Not enough here to, to do any damage. These Bane links really need to connect with something. Um, <laughs> these these links actually now separated on different sides of the battlefield uh, as they run away from the Bane links. Bane links coming up here mm, to hide, to push through the rocks that aren't there. And Pesosa's returned home. He's actually gated off large sections now of his base. You have to walk around kind of this S shape here to, to maneuver uh, into his base. Really cut off a lot of avenue. He's really thinking on multiple levels. As his roach is going to get a, a couple free shots, but this is actually marked off. He's he's, he's either going home or he's trying. He's going to run into rocks he's got to destroy. And it looks like Pesosa is going to give him a hard time trying to remake those rocks. Back home, we do see Pesosa coming out with more and more roaches. A roach warren halfway done for Tool. Uh, Pesosa, excuse me, uh, Tool hitting these rocks and is going to flood his lings around them and attempt to break them down. Um, these ling, uh, these banelings, and join in the fray. Hello, banelings. So 
This, of course, puts the Roaches in a very good position to take some shots to pre-spread out. They know where their opponent wants to come in. Uh, back home, we do see a uh, layer for both players. Uh, about halfway done for Tool and about a third of the way done for Pesosa. A um, lot of Roaches coming in for Pesosa, hoping to sturdy up his defense and his army. Um, he has the work lead of about eight, and he definitely has the army lead. Oh, until about a moment ago when that number jumped up. Um, the armies are closing in quite a little bit. Pesosa's still in a moderate bit of a lead here. Uh, we take a look at the worker count. He does have a nine worker lead as a little over, uh, tools a little oversaturated on his main and undersaturated on his uh, natural and third. Uh, just starting to get the saturation going in his third, but Pesosa is a little better, looks like, at uh, maintaining his proper drone distribution, which goes a long way towards the income. So you notice down below, um, about 18, 17, 1800 to 15, 1600 for tool. Uh, small differences, they, they play for it, they, they make it worth it in the long run. Uh, the more efficient you are at gathering your minerals, spreading out your drones, uh, the less efficient you have to be um, when taking your fights. The overseer is going to get out of there. Uh, it doesn't look like this one is. There's a couple of ravagers. Ravager uh, Biles. Biles? Bi Biles? Biles. I will finish that off more. Uh, ravagers being morphed in now. Uh, take a quick look at the base. Take a quick survey. We have roaches. Or banelings. Uh, I saw one, right? One upgrade facility. Uh, so a handful of roachling. Roachling Bane for Tool. Uh, quick survey over here. We have a second evolution chamber being made. Uh, plus one is almost finished for both of them. Roach speed almost finished for both of them. But a Hydralis Den actually just went down for Tool. If I continue up here this path, I don't have any tech structures up here in the main. I, I actually like having tech structures and the uh, hive, excuse me, the layer in the natural. It's, it's easier to defend. It's more centrally located. It's kind of where your army likes to be. Um... Not only that, your uh, your main mines out first, and I'd I'd, I'd rather my uh, you know the, the the base I'd rather defend be my lair. The base I'd rather have in a more defensive position. So it does look like he's going to try again to bust down some rocks, but uh, great biles there as they're going to push push back this army and actually make them decide to come back another day for the rocks. A couple more ravagers being morphed in here. Uh, looks like. Uh, Wait, that's, um, so many purple spiny things, that's, wait a minute, yes, Hydralisk Speed, instead of range, opting for speed over range, um, Tool's actually also getting Overlord Speed a little late in the game now, um, Pesosa is getting his plus one carapace and his plus two range attack, um, very minimal creep spread here, whether or not they don't want to give their enemy an advantage of spread, or are, um, you know, just not as concerned about it as ZBZ. Um, let's continue taking account for things. We have Hydralis now being morphed in. Very, very strong units here for Tool. And a Hydralis in going down for Pesosa. Uh, the army up here babysitting the fourth for a little bit as he expands north and south along the map. Uh, rather than closer to his opponent. Um, Link's coming up here. Uh, checking all areas. Look like they're just checking the potential next base for any lings and they're going on the attack path to what they think will be an easy snipe but tool is sitting here with his army he's going to greet these lings and we'll see if pesosa can't pull back uh, looks like he's full engage in uh, and while he's doing there we go he does he does notice he's not going to win that fight and he pulls his army back he does have a pretty well saturated fourth third uh natural and main uh you can see he's pulling in about 300 extra three to four hundred extra minerals per minute down there um, as he pulls ahead, four in workers and about 20 in army. Uh, look at the upgrade. Plus two carapace has started uh, down there. And I don't think we have... It doesn't look like there's a second evolution chamber. Uh, a lurker didn't being made, but not a second evolution chamber for Tool. Um, so this is actually going to be a little more disparaging over time. Uh, as the Pesos is going to take slightly better fights due to his armor. Uh, but they are... Neck, neck and neck. 
neck and neck with their uh, melee upgrades. Uh, these slings are going to take an efficient fight at first, but they're going to fall quickly for the remainder of this army. Now, behind that, it does look like Pesos is dropping... Um, he's dropping a spire. Let's see uh, if he plans on moving into Broodlords, uh, maybe doing some muta, muta harass. Um, as lurkers, 11 lurkers being morphed. Looks like Tool either wants to take... He wants to take the fight on his on his terms, right? So either uh, really preparing for a heavy defense, heavy push from Pesosa, who is who is at at army army cap army. This is this is his current ideal army. Um, either wants to take a defensive fight, knowing his opponent is also uh, is probably at cap, or he wants to get himself in a good position with these lurkers and just take uh, the fantastic fight. Uh, Pesosa paying any attention, he should see these lurkers on the way. He needs to have overseers, and he does. He has three overseers here. He has the army he wants to have. Um, it'd be interesting to see what he what he trades his roaches in for. Um, but it, uh, actually, a really a really far back defensive position for these lurkers. Uh, looks like he's oh hey overseers, how you doing, buddy? So moving him a little closer. Uh, he's gonna lose. Oh, yeah, almost both of those uh, lurkers, as he really wants to get down this wall. Um, he's going to do this another lurker there. He's got nine more to go, though, nine more left. Um, there we go. There's that Broodlord den. Broodlord den? What do you call that? Um, being made a great con concave here. Um, the Ravagers are going to do fantastic work uh, dropping their biles on the lurkers, but you sh it's still a very scary thing to walk into. Yeah, sometimes they feel overpowered, sometimes they feel underpowered, sometimes you're just not sure what you're walking into until your army's gone and his isn't, or vice versa. Um, absolutely, this is, a, this is a fantastic fight for Tool. He's doing a great job uh, moving in here. He, he, took, he took a good fight. I think he stayed a little longer than he should have. And it looks like a couple more Biles hit than he needed to hit. So both these armies kind of had a standoff as... I'm going to have the name now. Um, oh, it's mutating into Brood... Brood, brood den? No, brood lord, den, den of lords. Um, Greater Spire. Oh gosh, I knew that. I didn't. Don't let me lie to you. Like I'd heard it before, and now I know. Greater Spire. Jeez. All right, so we have a Greater Spire, which means we should see um, corruptors. There we go. Nine corruptors. I expect brood lords now. Uh, not a lot in this army. Uh, handled brood lords well. I do like. The commitment to Hydralisks, but the Lurkers are now no longer a threat. Um, so we'll kind of see how this plays out and how, how many... What this army composition looks like. What the army composition of these two look like over time. We take a quick look at the economics uh, of this game. 66 workers to 58. Uh, Pesosa's 10, a little oversaturated. 5 to 8. Uh, 0 to 8, completely abandoned his main base. Uh, 4 to 4 here. 12 out of 10 there. 14 out of 12, so only a little bit more efficient with his with his drone selection. Um, so this is doing a good job of spending his gas, and both of them are kind of they're in the mix of that building up a bank and uh, rebuilding their army. We have a lot of lurkers now. This isn't so good. The more lurkers he commits to here, um, really the more useless of an army he has with all these broodlords uh, sitting here on this map. So I. I I would like for him to see more... I know, I know the Broodlords did the majority of the damage here. Not the Broodlords, excuse me. The Lurkers did the majority of damage last fight. But Zerg can re-up in, in different shapes and sizes. So as long as he's got vision, as long as he can see what's going down there, um, which, wait a minute. Yeah, he'll be able to. The, there's your Overseer. Uh, these Broodlings are going to do uh, fantastic damage to these Lurkers. Uh, just a couple more inches and this fight actually, actually kicks off. And there we go, taking some disgusting uh, lurker spikes here. Um, oh, that is so gross. These lurkers are going down left and right. Um, now these broodlords are slow. Um, they have to either commit in space or run away. And it looks like he's just committing to these lurkers. Every lurker that was morphed um, kind of keeps Pesosos from charging in. But as long as I, I say keeps, as he completely charges in, keeps him from uh, committing too strongly to the force and gives uh, Tool a little bit of time. But these Broodlords are absolutely devastating this army, um, little by little, bit by bit, forcing these Hydras to come in. They come in to commit a little too hard, and then we're going to have Roaches and Ravagers and uh, Hydras, and it's a GG. This Pesosa takes game number one. Um, actually, a really fantastic game. Sorry to get into late game Zerg. Um, 
a little bit of overcommitment on the, on the lurker's end, but not a um, not like a not an overwhelming defeat. Uh, both of them played really well, and I'm really excited to get into game number two, which is going to take place on Neon Violet Square. One we do see quite a bit, so good job to both of those contenders. Game number two. Spawning in the top left hand corner. Tool in the bottom right hand corner, taking game one. Pasosa. Both actually really spectacular forms from both players. Um, neatly dividing, almost dividing um, half the map there. They had both taken five bases before that final engage. Gotten up to Broodlord Tech and the Greater Spire. Uh, some really good engagements and smart play by Pasosa. Um, it did look like it came down to strategic play and tactical placement of their units right at the end. Uh, so really glad to see we had a good game. And I'm really excited about the second one. I think t I think Tool stands a really good chance of taking this one. As we take a look at their openings, we will see that Pasosa uh, did a very similar uh, spawning pool hatch. And we should see, expect to see a gas uh, tool uh, near uh, mimicking his 17 hatch gas pool. So the exact same opening that we saw in the last match. Now this ended in kind of a stalemate of, of forces. Neither one of them necessarily took the advantage. Um, Sosa's first 100 gas was still in speed. There goes his gas. It was a slightly slower speed, but if he's not being aggressive, he's not trying to hit those timings. Um, it was still speed when he needed it. Um, so I expect we're not going to see anything crazy for a few minutes here. Pesosa has a small lead in drones at the sacrifice, it looks like, of uh, a small supply block. Uh, take a look at the production tab. He does not have... There he is. He just started morphing in an, over, uh, an overlord. So it, it, if I had to take a, just a guess at this, he's, he's going for that extra, extra drone production for a minute. He's sacrificing early lings um, to be fully saturated a little earlier just a little earlier um, while being safe a couple links here going across the map okay yeah so Pesosa is in the chat he says better safe than sorry so that does look like what he's doing um, if you have any commentary on your on your build I'd love to hear it at least without spoilers all right so down here, we do have a bailing nest coming. Kind of a standard fare for ZVZ. Something I don't do. I don't. But um, that's why I'm still like Diamond 3 Plot 1. Um, Alright, so up here. Tool's got speed going. There's the bailing nest. And he actually hits a third. Just a little bit before his opponent. And here come the lings. Marching across the map. 12 lings uh, just being more for Perso. So almost perfect timing as he has the response. And the units to deal with this. He's got 18 lings at home. He doesn't have a third to defend. He's just got to work on this natural. Um, and this lings, this poor ling. This was not a mission you wanted. You could, you could win. You could survive. Um, he's actually going to run away. Maybe he will. Maybe uh, Tool will realize. Oh, there it is. There's the speed and there's the ling. Um, back into the production tab. We do see speed is on the way. Sosa still doesn't want to take this fight. Um, speed lings versus lings is, is not a close match. Um... But he's going to get speed just in time. He's got a couple of banlings morph again that worked really well defensively. Um, but his opponent may just be keeping it home. Maybe just be trying to prevent this uh, third base from ever going up. Because he's slowly going to build up a uh, slight economic advantage. A uh, couple more safety banes being morphed back home. Kind of interesting at the they're both about par for banling production. Um, and he's going to try to... Here's Tool trying to pull him into the banlings. And there's one good connection... Still three bins, and I'm having a little bit of a uh, little bit of stuttering issue here. I will fix that in just a moment. All 
Uh, so Pesosa in the side says he should add an Overlord to check the third to his checklist because he is very far behind right now. Don't close. I'm going to close another process really quickly. So, um, there we go. I close the process. I shouldn't have any more stuttering. I have a couple things going. There we go. So back in, uh, back, taking a look at Pesosa now, creating six more lings. Um, got a couple defensive banes here to protect it, but this third hasn't gone up. He's got no third to defend while his opponent is applying, is now at this point applying pressure. Ooh, four banes to, to two. Not a good trade. Uh, Pesosa does have the ling numbers. He is playing the, the bane ling dance. Looks like we might lose this queen. There goes the queen. As he's going to clean up, clean up these lings at his base. Um, there goes the Roach War, and that'll help, him all, that'll help a long way towards any constant pressure. Now, he's got to stay alive, and he's got to keep himself from taking any significant damage for as long as it takes for these Roaches to, to come out. Uh, once these Roaches come out, they really significantly uh, resettle the battlefield. We are going to have the, a new Queen being made in the main, with the main Queen moving down to the natural to help protect this. Three defensive Banes are going to do a lot towards keeping this safe. And we take a look at the production tab. Behind this tool is still macroing up. He is still building up uh, workers uh, while he continues his pressure. Nine more banelings being morphed as well for tool as they are right there. Hi, banelings. Uh, so this fight, he's keep, he's keeping the fight over at his opponent's base. He's keeping he's keeping it where he wants. He's going to poke at this road where he really really wants to get this. A couple banelings here are going to push that out. As I struggled to... Oh, no! So many Banelings! That is so many Banelings! That is so many workers! As he loses about 16 workers, that is natural. Um, I really gotta figure out... What the, uh... Where that little worker... Death is. That we see in all our fancy WCS uh, games. Maybe this is WCS 4 I'm missing. Anyway, uh, coming down here, he's still got links. He still doesn't have a third. Um, he's still continuing to keep this pressure up. Uh, while occasionally sneaking out a drone behind it. You see it is now 28 to 22 workers. You don't have to have more drones than your opponent uh, at first, as long as you kill them, right? So he's going to continue to move Lings down here. A little bit of stutter steps so he gets a good surround on those roaches. He decides to back up. And actually, some Lings running to their death here as reinforcements. Um, kind of on a move command, kind of an awkward moment here as they're going to they just get murdered to those roaches. I, I'm assuming he was... Behind here, doing some other things. More uh, Roach Warren and 12 drones actually being produced for Tool. Now, Pesosa does not have that luxury. He's still got to worry about this constant pressure. Uh, looks like he's going to drop these rocks um, to give himself some more room to maneuver. Uh, I would like to see Pesosa take a third. Um, it does seem to me that he still doesn't know there is a third um, for his opponent. He's got 20... He's got 26 workers now. He's continuing to uh, push him up here to the natural. We take a look at his his gas. He's got about 345 gas. I'd like to see him start pumping out some roaches or some upgrades to maybe get rid of some of that gas or take some workers off of gas, at least in the natural. Um, he's really needing these minerals as he's continuing to feel this pressure from Tool. Tool's doing a fantastic job of keeping him on his toes. Just one Ling over here, watch, bringing his entire army kind of, kind of out of place, and now he has to deal with a handful of Lings. And there's the cancel. All right, now his roaches are in position over here. That did a fantastic job of preventing the third. He knows by now his opponent is, is pushing uh, third territory. If he didn't now, he's, he knows for sure uh, right at this moment he's going to see it. He's going to sacrifice his life to know it. A uh, little bit of pressure now. Tool knows his third is here and semi-exposed. Uh, that might keep him at home. That might give us the time he needs to uh, kind of macro up and get back into this fight. And we are seeing a layer plus one, and there's that third, of course, uh, in the production tab. Uh, back home, Tool has got three hatches. He's got more Roaches, Queens, Roach Speed on the way, as well as five Overlords. He doesn't want to have to deal with Supply Block anytime soon as he's starting to go low on his main. Uh, ten is now his efficient number for drones, and he is a nearly fully saturated third. Uh, the third for Pesosa, not even halfway yet. Really really far behind. You can start to see it now. He starts to pull ahead workers, more than 21 workers uh, ahead, and still approximately 13 supply. So this has got a little bit of army. That's to be expected, though. He was playing on the back foot. Uh, very defensive. Um, he had to keep making army to deal with the influx of lings. I give to a lot of credit for pulling back when he did and deciding uh, that was the right time to stop engaging. 
Um, that decision, the decision to pull back and uh, no, not give your opponent uh, the opportunity to destroy your army uh, went a long way. So he is going to actually poke up here at the third again. Um, no, he made a, you know, he made a handful of uh, overlords. Maybe that was why. Maybe that was a good reason. Uh, it looks like he's. Uh, Pesos is going to try to get these as well. Um, he's got a lot of biles going down. He's going to get one over it. Actually, excellent, excellently aimed as the lings come down to try to save them and pull up at the last moment. A good pile of lings there. Uh, the queen has noticed him. She's going to come up and try to poke at him. Uh, not necessarily going to win that fight. can see the extractor from the top. Uh, he's going to get the queen. Looks like they might get... Nope, they, they pulled back. They pulled back. They're going to run away. They don't want to take this fight. This is not the fight they wanted. The tools really got to choose the right fight here. Um, whether or not that was it or it's something in the future. Uh, he can't throw away his advantage to one bad fight. You can look, he's got 41 supply, 20 workers, and 24 army ahead. One good, one convex into a concave, though, throws all of that away. Uh, take a look down here. Uh, Baneling Nest, Evo Chamber, Roach Warren, and kind of a forward... Forward thirds, opting this time to keep those, uh, keep those rocks up. Hydralists have joined the fight, however, and hydralists do so much damage. As long as not tanking the, as long as not tanking the damage, this is a very dangerous army. They're actually going to come over here, and they're going to get the rocks. Um, get them lined up in a nice little concave. This area here prevents links from flooding around and getting a good surround. To really take any kind of surprise, he's going to have to go the long way around. Uh, so he knows these rocks are done. He's going to lose him. He's just going to pre-spread down here and try to take as good as fight as he can. He's got, he's trying to make as much as he can for army. He's got like seven more roaches on the way. He's got plus one, and roach speed is just about to finish. Roach speed will really help them get in the position they need. Uh, would like to see some spree play here from from Tool. However, we are seeing a another lurkers den. We, he does like his lurkers. Um, if he get a if he get a good fight shortly after the first lurkers have a chance to morph in before his opponent has a chance to respond to it. Uh, by pulling up a spire, uh, he'll be in a good position. We are going to see the Overlord going down. That's going to keep him from spotting any of that Lurker morphing. Uh, Sosa's not going to know the Lurkers are coming, probably until he sees that first set of spines. Um, moments from finishing up. Oh, hello there. Thanks for the subscription, John. Hell yeah. You are the man, Twitch Prime. So... We do have this. Is This is building to a moment, right? This is building to a very complex moment. No lurkers have been morphed yet. He has the capability to do it, but he's clearing out overlords. Making a few banelings. There's the lurkers. Out of sight. So many lurkers. Uh, taking a look at Pesos's vision here. Uh, Pesos's vision here. He doesn't know the army's here. He doesn't know lurkers are morphing in. And here comes the army. They're going to get in position. This is a great concave from Pesosa. This is not the fight... Um, not the fight he wanted to take, but if he drops his lurkers in position and these spines start coming out, it doesn't matter how much your concave is. That was a disgusting, actually really good trade there for it. So it's a great bio was dropped right in position as those lurkers were trying to get there. He did not lose as much army as he could have. We do look at the army supply. is very similar. Um, it's a 10 worker advantage and about a 10 worker supply advantage for the tool. Uh, and these lurkers are trying to engage the fight. They're actually going to deny this entire base here. And looks like the Overseer is going to try to get in here so they get a good vision on The Biles are going to drop. They're going to try to drop as many Lurkers as they can. This is not a fight they can fight it. Come into Concave, con Convex, Armor Supply or not. Uh, zoom, zoom out a little bit. As Tool tries to take a fight over at the angle here. So many Lurkers lost. So many fantastic Biles have connected. He's going to have to retreat home. Um, I got to lick these wounds. You see the Army Supply. While he may have gotten 30 Workers, which let's not undercount 30 Workers, he lost so much Army. He was in the army lead by about 10 to 15 at the start of that. Now he's got a deficit of approximately 40, and he's having to build up. So, on the other hand, he's going to have to build workers for a little bit. He's going to have to really work on this fight. Um, but he's got the he's got the upgrade lead. He's got plus one uh, plus one railway. Let me make sure I'm looking at all right armies, right? So, if my upgrade oh buttons fights, it does look like Pasosa is pushing in. He says, "I think I have the advantage." Uh, I think that you threw away too much of your army, and I'm going to try to walk into this. Um, great ramp coverage there. These rocks aren't down. Walking into any of that is going to be so difficult, and Pesosa decides to go home. Both of these armies are near maxing out, so this is our opportunity to get the tech exactly where they want it. 
uh, try to take the best fight they can while re-upping their army by building up kind of a supply a supply lead. You can see earlier where we talked about where, where the uh, where Tool had been uh, taking the economic lead while they're both reaching 200 supply at the same time. Tool has a bank. Tool has a bank of 2,800 minerals and just yeah 600 gas. So when he takes the inefficient fight and he uses his defender's advantage, um, he's going to go a long way towards really just counterattacking, marching across the map. So Pesosa either has to take this pretty decisively, either take this pretty decisively right now, um, or really wait for his bank, really wait for him to save up. Let's see a lot of gas there for Pesosa as well. Um, Kind of puts him in a rough spot. This is, might not be the fight he wants to take, whether or not he knows he wants to take it. Uh, as he mentioned earlier in the chat, he wasn't aware that there was a third. Uh, so maybe he doesn't know how far or how much of a bank Tool might have right now. Now, supply block, a little bit of a supply block here from Tool. He's going to have to make a couple overlords. Um, looks like he's tried to send in a Ravager to get some damage done, but ended up taking a couple shots himself. Um, this is a very tough area to walk into. You're not going to walk into this. So what you do... You look around. Maybe you walk up here and you take this fight, but no lurkers there. No lurkers there. I was going to say, maybe you take this fight, but oh, lurkers. But no, he's actually concentrated all his lurkers right here. This is the fight he wants to take. This is the minerals he wants to save up. He does know. He does know where his opponent sat on basis. So we'll see where this evolves into. I still don't see any upgrades. Um, nope. My cameras are fun. Uh, take a quick look. It selects the alternate towards upgrades. I don't have my upgrade button yet. Uh, there we go. He's actually going to make it up this ramp. He's going to push his way into this, and he's going to take this fight. There go the lurkers, and there go the biles, trying to get it done as the lurkers actually get a significant amount of spines in, but that curse and bile, that escape, uh, I'm not sure who did more damage there. As again, they have to reburrow and protect this ramp. And the army goes home. This split right here, see, just completely separates the army. You're going to want to get these rocks out of the way. You can maneuver faster. Uh, what he's going to find, he's going to find the, what's that, the the fifth and sixth base, well, fifth at least. Is he going to find the, is he, is he going to see this? It's right there. You want it. You you know you want it. Then he's going to see it. Uh, and this is this is a, a done base. Um, I mean, on the other end, his opponent, uh, he also still hasn't expanded to his easy fifth. He's got a protected source of income down there. Um, he is now on the up, but he's going to get a handful of lurkers before they have a chance to get into the ground. And Tool is just walking into this fight right now. Um, he's probably taking the worst fights he could take. Although his army supply is, is higher, I really love that uh, Pesosa here is doing so much. It even looks like a more big, uh, bigger and more intimidating army. These Ravagers are just massive creatures compared to the Hydralis. Um... Well, the Hydralis and the, uh, the, let's see, Roaches. Ah, there we go. This is what changes the fight, ladies and gentlemen. There's that Greater Spire. There are those Broodlords. There's the Lurkers. This combination can can set up a siege and take the fight however he wants it. Uh, and Pesosa is currently unaware that this exists. All right, all ends Pesosa. Coming up here to the north, kind of protecting his new base. That is... That is definitely going to kill an overlord. That was a lot of biles. Um, we do have a base down here. It is now completed. He does have it. So I like to check if he's hotkey, right? So that that base rallies here. That base rallies there. He's got it on hotkey. He's going to be using it for larva, uh, if not mining it very shortly. He's continuing to produce. Take a look at the production tab. More corruptors. Um, more corruptors on the way. More corruptors morphing. Uh, should be morphing in the broodlord soon. And that's the fight he wants to take. Broodlords are very difficult to answer to if you don't currently have corruptors or something something in the air. Uh, if I'm scanning around the base, I know I, I don't think I missed it. There is no spire. There's no spire in production. Uh, there is a hive, however, for Pesosa. So we'll see what he decides to do with... Uh, see if he decides to go that direction with his hive tech. There comes the move out from Pesosa. I actually, like, kind of pre-splits it. Right? Well, if not makes it more of a spreads them out vertically um but if he maneuvers properly he turns that into a concave and moves in this direction kind of takes a fight um if we take a look at the army supply we take a look at the bank um tool is going to have an easier time to remax though i see a lot of misplaced bank um he's not hiding the broodlords they are now spotted and now with this information out uh, let's see how pesosa decides to proceed he's going to 
actually continue to move around, maybe find a different angle up here. Um, these corruptors. Uh, looking for some damage? Not a lot that shoots... Wait a minute. No, no, there's a... There's Hydralis, right? He has... Hydralis... There's, he has Ultralis. Yeah, he should have... There's Hydralis in this army, right? I didn't miss it. Like, I haven't been not seeing Hydralis, right? No? Well, the army's moving across the middle of the map. Uh, looks like he's the side where he's going to take the fight. But now that Pesosa has hidden his army in the top right-hand corner, it looks like it might be a base trade. We'll see if anybody turns around as these overseers charge ahead. Um, he's... Oh, 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 let me get to the action. A tool here, getting in, dropping one base. Pasosa coming in here, getting into the natural. Uh, streaming in Roach and Ravager. Um, kind of separating a bit, moving into the moving into the main. It looks like uh, Tool has decided to turn around. This is not the fight uh, he wants. This is not the space that he wants to trade. He thinks he's got the army advantage. He does not need these tricks. He does not need the base trade right now. Um, but he's got to get up there quick. And this is not a notoriously fast army. The Broodlords are so far behind, and they're the key component of this army. Uh, you can see here now Roach Ravager taking out his third base, taking out his, his main base. All that's left are these sparse little bases on the bottom of the map down here, and this, this small uh, mining one in the top. And this is a critical amount of damage. If Pasosa can get away with this, if he can leave and defend off the counterattack, this will be the end. This will be Pasosa's second game, and he'll take the series. Uh, but what they're running into... There's Broodlords on the way. They gotta retreat. They have to continue to retreat, but these Broodlords who were slow are now catching them on the, on the return. They're not only slowing them down, they're forcing them to walk around. They're killing the pathing. They're splitting up this army. As he's down to 142 army supply. Now, he does have the capability to reinforce it, although he's he's now at actually really low minerals. The capability might be low. His only real mining base is gonna be this third one. This natural has been mining for too long. Uh, if we take a look at the minerals, they're actually... Even with the extra bases that Pesosa killed, they're mining about the same number of minerals. Uh, hoping to get into position here, we do have opposing Broodlords. So he did manage to get that Spire out along with the Greater Spire. We do have Lurkers tearing up spines. Uh, they do have the range, they have the vision. Um, he's just got to decide when the right moment is. More Broodlords coming in now. The Broodlords are going to change the game. We're going to a little quiet for this. this Broodlords. These Broodlings are plus one, plus one. The Hydrants are plus two, plus zero. Or sorry, plus... Yeah, plus two, plus one. Um, and there go the spines. Here come the Hydralist. There's the concave. That's kind of the fight he wants to take. Uh, he's going to back up a little bit. His Corruptors are coming after the Broodlords. Hydralists are coming after the Corruptors. Hydralists are absolutely melting this army. Uh, a little bit of stutter step in. They're going to have to deal with this uh, this bile. Oh, so absolutely fantastic bile connections. As Pesosa continues to maneuver backwards in through these spines. Using them as a defensive position, using them as extra extra damage. The Broodlings on both sides doing damage. Uh, he's got the Roaches in good positions, taking the fire. The Hydras are streaming across the map, joining the fight. Uh, we might be coming to an end soon as the Broodlings are back here getting free damage. Uh, the other Broodlings kind of forced to retreat here as these spines are all that stands between. Uh, looks like a final push. 173 supply to 76. The supply might tell the whole story here. 144 army to 52. Uh, only 28, only 28 to 25 workers. Not a lot of materials being gathered here. Uh, Pesosa actually took a fantastic, a fantastic strategy going up there and taking out his opponent's base, but he lost one of his two only mining bases. Now he's looking to do a wraparound, looking to get, um, looking to find the reverse of his, uh, excuse me, the rear of his enemy's formation, only to find that his enemy was on that route too, on the death patch. These broodlings continue to, to come out from all directions. Uh, Looks like he's coming home, hoping to protect most of his tech structures, his broodlings, broodlords, uh, getting ready and into position. As this third base, the last real mining base goes down for Pesosa. Uh, Tool deciding to, to hang back for a moment, let those broodlings from the base die. And then he's moving around south, coming to take this position. These drones potentially marching to their death as they hope to find minerals in long distance mining. Uh, oh man, absolutely. 165 army supply to 56. 193 supply to 63. There have to be some godlike bile shots. As Pesosa looks like he's decided the base trade is the way to do this. As he marches across the map, his his opponent uh, coming in here to base trade a little faster. No, I don't. I don't believe there there were no ultralists ever made. Just an ultralist cavern. As all the major truck structures for Pesosa go down. 
uh, the Death March to find all the army on the other side of the map for Pesosa as he searches for every last thing. I don't know if he knows how much of his opponent has going. And we do look like six workers left for Pesosa. Um, little, no bases? There is a gas all the way over there, hidden in the corner. If we get to a real base trade, he's going to have to find that. And Tool deciding it's better to return. It's better to deal with these very tiny armies uh, doing damage to his base. A little bit of a um, little bit of army there coming in to save the day as Sosa is focused on these buildings. Uh, actually, two hydros go a long way towards making sure that they aren't there anymore. Um, this base is going to go down. Uh, no army on the other side of the map from Sosa. He's actually prolonged his life quite a bit here as the armies are marching. Uh, oh, there it is. This army is going to clean up Sosa's remaining forces up here. And this army should clean up the remainder of Sosa's forces here. He's actually dropping another hatch where there's where there aren't any minerals. Uh, but he still has this down here. There are six workers, there are 19 workers for Tool. Uh, they're spread out in different locations. Uh, it looks like the army, if you take a look at the units tab, there are two Broodlords and five Roaches. There's the Roaches, the Broodlords are over here. Uh, a couple larva. There is a spawning pool, a baneling nest. Um, there's this Hero Roach over here doing a, doing something. Uh, looks like Tool's gonna wrap this up. I'm not sure if Pesosa thinks he's finding all the remaining tech structures. Uh, Broodlords are flying. Let's see where they're going. I think there's a marker. There should be a marker anyway. Uh, Broodlords trying to find any remaining buildings hiding over there. Um, these roaches are going to town as Overkill is heading their direction. And this is always tough when you're, you're, you're trying to do a base trade and you're not sure you know, the right level of responses, and your your opponent just seems to be splitting in five different directions. Um, so you end up all arming everything, and not, not even in the right numbers in the right directions. Um, his opponent is finally tapping out. There's a GG from Pesosa, and we are tied up. 1-1. One, one. Oh, I'd like to thank uh, The Way Out Is Through, or, or John. Thank you again for the, for the subscription, for the Twitch Prime subscription. Um... And that feels pretty good. All right, so I'm going to take a short break because I think we're, we're more than halfway through. Uh, I'm going to utilize the latrine to be about three minutes, and we'll go ahead and get to the game three for Tool Pesosa to see who takes away uh, takes away this set. All right, and we're back. So. Bam. And even if you're watching on YouTube, I haven't paused. So you didn't have to wait the whole three minutes. If it was three minutes. I had to refresh vodka. Mm. So game three, Pesosa versus Tool. Those have been very close games. Um, neither one of them... Uh, let's see, first one was 17 minutes. This last one was 26 minutes long. Um, Pesosa really holding on there right to the end. Um, we're going to go again. This is anybody's game. We're in group three. We're in game number four. And uh, four of six. Let's see how this goes. This next one's going to be on Abu Genesis. Another one we don't see a lot of. People really love that neon neon light one. So. All right. Spawning in the bottom right hand corner, taking his first game against Pesosa. His second win overall in this group stage qualifiers. It is Tool. The favorite for his group, going 2 0 against his first opponent, and 1 1 in this round. It is Pesosa. All right, so uh, Pesosa opting to, uh, looks like 17 hatch. On the opposite side, it does look like we got a 12, 12, 12 here from Tool. Uh, let's see if this transforms into aggression. Ooh, we have double gas, double, excuse me, gas cancel for Tool. Let's see if this translates into continued aggression or pressure. Uh, or simply is trying to get a uh, 
trying to get a hatchery cancel. Now, last last game he went a long way uh, by hiding a third, and uh, you know I wouldn't say keeping that information from his opponent, but his opponent definitely not seeking out that information. Um, Coming up here, it does look like Pesosa is getting his he's getting his spawning pool. He's got his hatch going. So, you know, different approaches. I'd say standard stuff, but it depends on what I start to see next. So, there's sixlings. There's four more. There's six more on the way. It does look like this is an attempt at continued pressure. Um, an absolute... Well, it's a 12 or 14 pull. There comes the baneling nest. Um, there are currently fourlings in production. There's a queen about to come out. There's a drone. So that's a change up. That is a, a change from expectations. Um, we'll see what continues to pop out of the production tab now. As he starts his attack uh, on the natural, there are six lings about to finish. He pulls some drones to help defend this. Um, let's see how many drones he ends up losing. Um, looks like the lings come out to help defend this. And he's going to push back. Uh, he's going to push tool back. Um, and this actually, not, not bad if you hold, he's hold commanding his lings there, or hold commanding his drones, using begin to fight, but all this time, remember, uh, Pesosa isn't mining at optimal levels, uh, it does look like six more lings in production, so he's, he's doubling down, uh, on this fight, here comes the bane lings, he's looking to make this a ling bane fight, he's hoping to get this queen now, good surround on the queen, uh, we'll see if it, it's not enough, as a combination of this queen and these lings down here, um, keep this queen alive. He's going to push back the overboard, keep that pressure in position, and keep the advantage in his favor. Um, you know, rum and coke is a, is, a, is a great drink, John. One of my favorites. I do rum and diet myself. Something about, uh, you know, not giving myself the extra 40 or 50 calories or so. But what's, what I have on hand is vodka. Vodka and soda water. So you do what you have. Um, what is, oh, grenadine. Okay. What does grenadine taste like? What does grenadine taste like? Hmm. For, those you, for those of you watching on YouTube, um, I've essentially been doing these nearly every every day. Um, I should post more of a schedule. Uh, but I've been trying to give a little bit of warning for when I'm going to be doing these live. So if you want to, if you want to catch me these lives, you want to hang out and chat uh, and watch these these games unfold, I will be doing the round of sixteen. Uh, next week, probably uh, take a look at the groups, see if any groups are finished, and start as early as, as Monday. So it's twitch.tv underscore uncommon underscore gaming. Should be a link somewhere below in the YouTube channel. All right, so he's continuing this pressure over here. Tool is continuing to poke. Now, if we take a look at the results of his pressure, uh, he is significantly behind in, in supply overall, but his, his worker count is about the same. Um... It's this army he keeps throwing away. He's he's kind of lost his opportunity and his momentum to keep making this push. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if I saw a good counterattack from Pesosa. He, it, maybe get some damage in. He's going to be a little a little bit behind on his uh, at least on his economy for you know, just just barely just for a little bit. And it depends really how much each of these each of them commit now to their workers and where they stay. We see Tool opting to be home now, knowing he's a little outclassed an army. Uh, and he's focusing uh, a little more on drone production. Um, just a couple drones at a time up there in the tab. Four more being started for Pesosa, opting to, to stay at home and drop a Roach Warren. Uh, much safer move once this stops being a Ling, a Ling Bling battle. Um, uh, roaches are definitely a good answer, a good safety answer. Uh, do have kind of the reverse here. Um, trying to even out drones from his main. He did bring all his drones in response down here. Now they're uh, defending here at the natural, not defending, gathering here at the natural. There goes the, uh, actually the other Roach Warren, I missed it over here for Tool. So it looks like we are going to shift into Roach as both of them, wait, wait. As one of them is going up to layer tech, so Roach, Roach, this could just be for Roach speed. Um, this is the necessary evolution of the game. He could be trying to get into um, some more airplay. We might see some mutas. Pomegranate. I did not know that grenadine tastes like pomegranate. Pomegranate are those really odd to eat fruits, right? They they got like lots of pockets. Pocket fruit. Um, okay. So not a bad creeps right here from Pesosa. Looks like he's getting out early and aggressive. Really gives him information he needs. 
um, to kind of to continue to, to drone up. And that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing more drones, more upgrades, some safety roaches uh, being made down here. Uh, kind of replenish his army and give him something on par with what Pesosa had. Um, but really, really the focus for both of them at the moment is, is to continue to drone up and tech up. They're kind of happy to sit at home right now after some of those engagements. There he goes, Scouting Ling. What is Scouting Ling going to see? He's going to see that he's been scouted. As he runs around the overlords, he's going to go right past the others. Uh, did speed just kick in? Yeah, speed just kicked in. And he's going to see the third base going down. So in response... What's he going to do? So, actually, interesting location for a third base. I guess that's the one that makes the most sense. He is going to expand on his own. He's got to, he's got to either keep up or be aggressive now. Uh, so he drops his third. He knows he's, he's not going to face any kind of immediate timing push. Uh, he's got a few seconds at least of safety. He's got a decent sized army here. We take a look at the workers. So he's got a slight lead. The early aggression uh, not working out for tool really gave him that that push. Uh, a couple queens here. I'd like to see some creeps spread now that we have two in the natural. Uh, looks like he's going to get that overlord. Is it? Or sorry, the overseer. As he's coming over here to check for a third. And he's going to see. Wait a minute, there's a button for this. Now he's going to see it. There's a, there's a button for this, right? The, all right. Anyway, sometimes it follows the uh, follows the camera. Sometimes it doesn't. So I'll zoom back out. We do have a layer down here now. Uh, for Pesos is complete. Take a look at the production tab. We have a hyd a hydralis coming out for tool, uh, with plus one just about just a little behind Pesos's plus one. And um, looks like Rich Speed and plus one Carapace and seven Roaches being morphed ten. Uh, we take a look down here. He's producing more. Uh, more, uh, excuse me, more drones, and uh, the first Hydralis is on its way. There's a uh, Hydralis speed, and plus two for Pesosa just kicked off. So it looks like Pesosa is going to have a little bit of the, the tech advantage for upgrades, but he's, wait, make sure I'm looking at that right. A little bit of the, yeah, a little bit of the tech advantage for upgrades, but he does not have, he's not going into Hydralis yet. He's committed so far to Roaches. He hasn't seen anything that's going to threaten him or any reason to tech up yet. Um, his opponent is definitely taking it one step up. He's going to have to resaturate some of his, uh, resaturate his, uh, unsaturate, unoversaturate his main, and he is significantly farther behind in workers. Uh, full saturation almost here on his third here for Pesosa, who is actually a little neater, a little better at keeping himself from being oversaturated on bases. Uh, much better on top of that as his queen gets another overseer. The one that saw the third and continued to hang around down that spot, um, Take a look at the vision on the map. You can see that Pesosa's definitely got this fantastic creep spread, you know, all the way down. I'd love to see one of them try to start cleaning that up. And the creep spread, you know, meeting in the middle gives them both a highway, but it doesn't give them both a vision. So Pesosa's definitely got the information. He's always been kind of the information uh, broker of all of his games. He's got his very well thought out overlord positions, uh, and he is going to move out now. Looks like he's going to try to take a fight down here in the third. He's got, he definitely has the army advantage. Um... And these banes are are good if they get the connections where they want the connections. Uh, but what we don't want to do is allow them to spill the slings and take out those banes into the middle of his um, in the middle. Oh, excuse me, in the middle of his roaches. I do that way too often. All right, looks like Tool is doing a fantastic job of uh, kind of pushing this back. Uh, Sosa streaming across the map decides it's better not to throw everything away. Uh, at that moment, some great connections there with the banelings, even though they were relatively inefficient. Anything in a cluster of baneling made some money, did some damage. It doesn't have to kill five or six lings uh, to be worth it when you have an army supporting it right there. If you damage a little bit of everything, they can clean up the rest of it. Um, so we do have, we're talking a little bit of oversaturation. He's a little oversaturated on his main, on his natural, and he's going to push out over here. He's going to come over here and destroy one enemy avenue of approach. Um, Pesosa kind of back here, refiguring himself out. He's got a fourth base going now. If he gets that up for production, just in, he should get that up in production just in time for his. I'd say his main to mine out, but his natural's been mining a little longer. Um, should might actually mine out relatively the same time now. He's not going to have the same worries uh, that Tool had. Um, he didn't lose as much earlier on, but we have now some overloads being cleared up, and that's 100, 200, 300. That's 400. Um, Minerals worth of overlords any supply block now that um, I mean Pesosa either has to answer that or 
and you hold back for a little bit to, to rebuild. Um, this is kind of, I don't know if this is like an exploration push hoping to catch this army out here, but you know, he doesn't know Tool is backed up yet. Uh, or he should know because his, uh, he's got great vision and that's been a fantastic, uh, fantastic trade up so, so far in this game. Um, Tool getting his own fourth base over here in the same position as they're both kind of mirroring each other in their expansions. Um, uh, interesting place for Pesos. Every time he comes out to an outskirt like this, we've seen him try to counterattack at a weird angle, uh, maybe waiting for his opponent to come in uh, up the middle. Uh, he did it last game with the base trade. Let's take a quick look at the tech. We do have lurkers have been a favorite of tools so far. There goes the lurker den. It's about to finish up. Uh, kind of why he moves in the hydralisk a little early. And you can see he's a little oversaturated on bases, but which is great because then he gets to send all those excess workers right over here in a few seconds and uh, start off a little ahead. Um, let me take a look at the upgrades. It is 2-1. Pesosa's usually been a little ahead on the upgrades. Um, he has a small advantage there. Uh, with Hydralis range now being started uh, down here for Tool. Hydralis actually played a very key role for him the last the last game uh, that's super high damage and these great connect now a uh, hit or miss now with the lurkers uh, sometimes his lurkers have been fantastic for him but it seems like Pesosa knows how to handle it um, we do have the spire going down as well as we might see that broodlord combo he hopes hoping to, to finish off the game with the broodlords lurkers walking into a very dangerous position caught out of place here as the hydralis uh, get in there there is still vision that he's going to be able to clean this up a couple free shots here from the lurkers uh, but absolutely not making their money today, and at least not as much as they had made in the previous game. He's going to chase this army away. Shaving off a few units on the way. Uh, let's see how far Pesosa decides to push this, uh, sending a few roaches in, uh, and then pulling them off to the side. Kind of shaving, shaving three off here. Maybe see how far the army would go. Uh, picking off a few extra units while he's at it. He's going to see that there's a fourth base, and he's going to reposition over here, uh, potentially take the fight where he wants it. Some of this fantastic maneuvering by Pesosa, but got to give it the tool. He's there. He knew it was coming. He knew where it was at. He's there to meet it. Excellent exchanges there. Corrosive Biles going up. Uh, great connections with those Corrosive Biles. He's going to push off this army, and it looks like he might lose his hatchery. Opting to, to take that hatchery and back out. Alright. Tool making uh, making a greater spire now. Four more hydralis. 16 hydralis from Pesosa in production. And he's continuing to run up behind this. You see he's also going for hydralis speed so he can keep up. He's got a whole highway here for him. Uh, speed of the hydralis is really going to give him some maneuverability. Uh, Plus three range coming down for Tool. And there was an Overlord. Bye! Woo! All right. Oh, man, this match. It's back. This is this is into. They, they have seemed to really love getting into this mid to high range ZVZ. We see Lurker play. We see Brood Lords. I mean, we're seeing the styles are very different. While Pesosa... Uh, actually, this is the, these are the first lurkers we've seen up so. I was gonna say they're not necessarily just uh, they're not, not just copying each other. They do seem to favor lurkers and broodlords, kind of get into that nice high end tech. Um, they're fairly equal matched economically. There's kind of this mind game going on um, for the two of them. Great creep spread, great highway. As he's kind of just you know allowed this this to exist. They both kind of this like gentleman's agreement of we both want this creep, so let's have it. Uh, Pesosa aggressively expanding on all sides here. One, two, three, four, five, six bases uh, to his opponent's four. This is going to give him a huge advantage when they're starting to, to focus on the fights, when they're trading their armies. Um, these bases are already established. He's just got to make sure he's keeping his workers uh, properly situated between each one. Now, there's this little cruise here of... Roaches coming in, hoping to get some damage done. Uh, they are going to meet... Tool's army, who instead of opting for a series of spines, has opted to just be there and stop the advancing. Um, they are very equal in supply. They're both starting to build up a bank. Pesosa actually have a, has a significant number of, amount of gas, which is going to say a lot to his ability to rebuild the more more complex and more technical units. 
um, rel uh, relatively. I think they're both relatively willing to be in worker supply, and at this point, it's it's all trying to build up the exact army they want. If we take a quick look at the units tab, um, we have uh, four tool ravagers, a couple corruptors. I imagine are going to be made the brood lords, uh, roaches, brood lords. Yeah, roach, brood lord, hydra, a handful of links. Um, a near, I'd say, a almost identical army for Pososa, Minus, we don't have any brood lords yet. Um, Take a look at the protection tab. He does have a greater spar on the way. He does want to transition into that tech, so we should see it. Um, and these may be just shaving off pieces of his army. This is not the. He does not necessarily want these Ravagers late game. He's going to send them off to see what damage they can get done. They didn't find a base here, uh, so they're going to continue to move around. They're going to get right into the natural, and it looks like they're going to stop right here at the spine crawler. Um, this is actually going to cause Tool to bring his entire army over here um, in response. I would have loved to see Pososa like. In position to get something else. He's gonna drop some biles, hopefully get some damage done um, down here in these workers. Those biles actually caused Tool to pull back. Uh, he saw them get the air and he thought he thought danger. Um, it's actually an excellent move here um, from Pesos to shave off some army supply, give him the better composition he wants. You can see he's making nine uh, broodlords to, to deal with this. He's got what's that? Uh, he's got nine nine broodlords, nine lurkers. Like he's moving them for me to count them. Um, Almost 20 Hydralisks here. This seems to be his ideal army. A couple Corruptors to deal with the Broodlords. His opponent's going to have... Um, I, think, I mean, that's it. That's what he wants. That's the army he's bringing to this fight. There's one Ling here. Um, which, if he got rid of, he can maybe make another Roach. Or make another... Wait. No, he's got no Roaches. This is a, a very powerful army. He doesn't have... He shaved off his Roaches. He shaved off his Ravagers. He filled them with, with Hydralisks. Uh, we take a look at his opponent. He's got roaches. He's got hydralis. He's kind of got a mix of everything he's had this entire time. He's not taking the, the time to shave anything off. You see Pesosa here kind of uh, shaping the battlefield uh, the way he wants. He's going to do this, like, tank maneuver of, of pulling back, slowly shifting his his opponent's army coming into this. He's going to have to either deal with this before they move forward and get into position. Or it's going to be very tough to answer. And now we have a couple corruptors that are going to be going over here and they'll start shaving off broodlords. Um, now while the broodlings are going, they're still running into lurker spikes. They're still, oh, this great position here as he forces his opponent back and he gets his lurkers into an even better position. Now they really have to advance to get any damage done. Pesosa is doing a great job of positioning his army. Now let's see if this maintains correct. Maybe, maybe I'm missing something, but the positioning here is fantastic for Pesosa as he gets his lurkers even farther. Sneaks him around into the mineral line, splitting his lurkers in two positions, forcing his opponent to answer. Oh, this is absolutely fantastic. These, these Broodlords are going down. The Corruptors are doing so much damage. There's a GG, the well played, and Pesosa takes the game 2-1. <sighs> oh, that was good. That was an excellent execution. Uh, the key difference for me there at the end was just shaving off and having the exact army he wanted. Nine Broodlords, nine Lurkers, Hydralis. That was it. That's all he had coming. Oh, uh, four Corruptors. He had nothing wasted. He didn't have any roaches, any ravagers sitting in there. He had, I think, one ling, um, you know, in the mix. But he came into that fight uh, with a plan. It was very well executed, uh, staggering in, kind of like you'd see Terran and their and their siege tanks uh, until he forces every time. And every time he forces enemy out of position, he dug in just a little bit further until his opponent conceded. So, but so, so that was very well done, very well executed, and uh, I'm going to mark that down now as a two-one. You're a very dangerous opponent, and I look forward I look forward to seeing you in the round of 16. Alright, so next round is um, Tool and Asmodian. And this first game is on Blackpink. Everybody's favorite, Blackpink. Huh. Now let's go into game number one. Let's take a look at who's hanging out. Hey, this is Sam's hanging out. Pesosa, Tool. Glad you guys could watch your game. Let me know what you thought about the casting. Was I spot on on your plans and your ideas there? I'd be, I would love, absolutely love your feedback on how I can do this better. I have a list myself. Don't get me wrong. Um, but you're here for it too, Tool. Spawning in the top right-hand corner in the green. 
having won zero games and given a walk over to Surreal. Um, so hoping to make his moment now. It is Asmodian. So we just saw a fantastic play at a tool. Uh, really into his late game, Zerg. Let me rephrase that. I, I guess I shouldn't say your name until the end, right? You can build it up. So it's it's, it's it, goes, it should go like this. Having run into late game Zerg, spinning his opponent down with Broodlords and Lurkers, it's the Maneuverer tool. Much better. <laughs> Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, I'm always working to get better. I know I have so much room to improve, it's not even funny. Um, but I'm super glad that I have games to, to cast and people who will want to watch it. Like, I'm super stoked to be here and be part of this team right now. Uh, so as long as y'all are still watching, I'll keep doing it. So you're going to have to apologize for some stutters, everybody. Uh, looks like I need to restart my computer ahead of time uh, for these. I'd run so many processes in the background that I think just keep my computer on for like eight days in a row isn't healthy. Um, but let's take a quick look at what we saw. Um, we did see... Uh, taking a look at where everything's at right now. Tool went 17, 17, 17, or 17, 18, 17 to get his hatch cast pool. Um, let's see if he pulls workers and where he intends to take this. If this is just going to be macro until he's until he feels safe to push in. Uh, same thing from same thing from Asmodian. He's got a Reaper coming in. It's going to walk there, and then it's going to probably come check out, do some scouting. Um, Asmodian did this nice thing where he left his his Reaper kind of on the ramp, waiting for that first set of, first set of Ling so we could defend it uh, before moving out. I should expect to see, um, there it is. I expect to see that. I expect to see a little bit of scouting here by his SCV. And that allows him, that absolutely allows him to leave his Reaper over here, uh, protect this SCV. Uh, nothing worse than being mid-production, just having four to six Lings destroy your work while your Reaper's on the other side of the map. Um, so this move here comes from pain. This move, this move, leave the Reaper here comes from, from suffering, uh, and that's what we're doing now. So, first building is the reactor. So it looks like we're going to see a switch on, and we're going to see Hellions come out and do some do some damage. I do love to see some early Hellion harass, especially when the drones line up nice and juicy for a barbecue. Um, first couple queens are out, and there's six four links, four links. So nothing super aggressive. Looks like he wants to stay home and answer a Reaper. Uh, as long as they're on the creep, they can continue to push them, especially with these queens here in position to help. We are going to see a starport come down, and here's the Hellion production any second now, uh, coming out of Asmodian. Bam! Double Hellions. Absolutely dangerous thing to deal with. Uh, second queen out here. Should just connect to the second and third base. There it is. And we start injecting four queens. Absolutely scary, uh, scary thing to walk into as a Terran. Queens are this unknown. They can transfuse. Um, they can shoot air. And they're never bad. Like, they're always there for creep spread. They're always there for injections. They're, they're not a bad use of minerals. Um, there's the Reaper. Absolutely... Um, Fantastic play by Tool. The Reaper finally decided to move out and found himself. Uh, felt safe to move out and found himself. Caught on the other end of the Lings coming across the map to take a look. Now these Lings are going to run into a couple of Hellions. We're going to have a little bit of a dance here. Um, as we see how much of a barbecue we get. They're not moving. Oh, they're going to get in through the Supply Depot. And looks like they might pick off a couple of SCVs while they're at it. Um, no, no SCVs gotten. They are going to be, they're going to hit the, the Ling barbecue. Uh, good response there by Asmodian. He's already going to build a third. Zerg's thirds just finished up. We take a look at what they're building at all ends. We have spore crawlers. Uh, he got up there. He saw the tech lab. So maybe he's expecting Banshee. So Banshee play, spore crawler response. Absolutely understandable. Um, maybe that's why we got to switch in the Viking. Um, um, another barracks. I'm sorry, the barracks is getting its own tech lab. And we're getting two more factories. So possibly a commitment into some tanks there. Nope, oh, there's the Hellions coming in for a drive by. No, uh, no drones at the third base, so they're coming in here for the barbecue. Oh, great connections there. As he's getting several drones, they line up as they flee around, running around the buildings. Uh, he's going to stop moving them here as Lings and Queens kind of push it all back. Uh, great connections there. Try not to lose them. I would say at least one of my early, uh, my early coaches. You really, he really wants to get out of there with those. Once he sees he's not getting the connections he wants, those Hellions are, are a fantastic thing to have around. Oh, hey. 
What you doing there, buddy? You got a plan? Do you have a plan to do things? Well, this Viking's gonna push away this Overlord. And this is gonna take a third. So, anyway, for those back home, what I was saying is uh, a lot of times those Hellions are very crucial to mid early game pressure. They're great to get damage in if you can do it, but you really wanna try to get them out. Um, this Zerg has opted to put his tech there, so he knows there's roaches. Uh, there's a potential for roaches. If we take a look at the production tab, there's a couple that just produced out of there. Um, on the Terran, on the other end, we do have four more Hellions. We have more Hellions being produced. Uh, and there is now there are now tanks and a floating barracks. I expect this barracks to be used shortly as a scout. Um, we got another reactor here for, uh, for potential liberators. Um. Alright, coming down here. Spore crawler. I don't want to deal with liberators, he says. Spore crawlers. I don't like liberators. But he might be able to get me still. Um, let's see. Two evolution chambers and a banelings nest. And another spore crawler saying... I don't know if I need to position him up here or up down. It's, it's this weird thing. But I'll tell you, this is our, where to put the spore crawlers. Because here is the safest for, like, Banshee. Um, you're still vulnerable up here. For liberators, you're still vulnerable if they're back here and, and just kind of hitting the circle. You're kind of depending on these queens. And he's definitely got the queens to push this back. So it's not bad spore crawler placement. What I'm saying is, I don't know where to put the spore crawler. I don't know if that's good or if that's good. Or if they're both good, and is there one that's better? Is it situational? Is it Bane? Is it is about Banshee versus Liberator? Um, but we'll see if they work. We'll see what they do. Really, we'll, we'll see this come out. And this is exactly what he wanted to see. Um, more Lings, right? So Lings, Lings, and uh, Lings and Ravagers, both light units, both kind of uh, susceptible to this fire. He's going to swing around here. Uh, mm. Nope, a little more stuttering. And he's going to get right on in there. He's going for the barbecue. Uh, fantastic. No, no, new blue flames coming out. He didn't get rid of the blue flames. He's going to get the lings. They are frying. It looks like he's going to sacrifice all these hellions to make this happen, though. Uh, maybe try to get a few shots up here in the main. Um, one down. Excellent, excellent response there by Tool. All right, there's the floating barracks. Couple of SCVs hanging out here. Uh, take a look at his tech real quick. He's doubling down on the factories. Uh, more Hellions. There's more tanks. You know, a couple tanks in here positioned, kind of waiting for counterattacks. They're, they're, it's really hard to break this wall when you have any number of tanks. Uh, he's running out of room up here. No, no, he's just opting for uh, his command, another command center. Overseer morphing here. He's going to get a full scout soon potentially on uh, what's going on he's gonna see absolute full commitment to mech um, there we go so many factories so many dangerous things that can come out of that um, and they're gonna get the they're gonna get that little spy and these uh, these Vikings are gonna easily kill that overseer kind of nice for keeping pressure keeping them back Great queen, great creeps spread. You start to cover so much of this map, especially when your opponent is so mobile. You really need this creep spread, and he's continuing to drop. Um, he did. Tools also laid down a fourth. So both of them are expanding, probably uh, uh, approximately about the r same time. As Modian's a little behind, uh, he has not started his. He's not started his um, upgrades yet. There's not plus one, plus one, while his opponent has started plus two. So he's going to be one whole upgrade behind. He's going to try to get some good positioning, though. He's still got liberators. He's still got tanks. They do great things when they're in the right places at the right times. Um, very hard sometimes to, to make those positions happen. Um, but it can be a useful tool. A little bit up in army supply. Uh, workers are approximately the same. They look to both have uh, the workers they wanted. As Modian continued to produce, he just hit 67. So we might see a halting there as he expands uh, to a fourth base. And actually, looks like he's going to focus on... Let's see. Potentially tanks. Um, still get Thors out of there. We might see some Thors come out. It does look like he's going to move across the map with Tank, Hellion, Viking. Uh, interesting army composition here. 
I expect to see some landed Thors. There's not a lot of air and uh, not not a lot of air for his opponent right now. Hive has just started for Tool. Um, actually, a uh, big bank for both players right now. Three thousand and four thousand minerals for both of Masmodian. Upwards of twenty five hundred gas. That's, that explains the the three additional factories. He's really trying to to spend everything he's got now, and he's he's cleaning up. He's got to find the right position for these tanks to do exactly what they want. He's going to land the Vikings. Um, and the Hellions are going to come here, and they're going to be your mobile force trying to keep the enemy back, take the engagement where he wants it. Um, and I kind of like it. I kind of like where he's at. He scans over to the right to make sure he's not being surrounded. He scans over to the left trying to find the same thing. Um, and he's going to try to get something in here uh, with his Hellions as his tanks have volley after volley. Now, these are four tanks. I'd like to see Tool kind of push into this. Uh, it's not a lot of army. And he does bring the Queens over. He does bring the tanks over. And he is cleaning this up. He's going to pull back and he's going to sit down. Um, so Asmodian, much smaller army. Um, he's got a little more workers. But a lot of this is... A lot of this is just due to this excess in, in minerals. He doesn't have the production facilities to support the three bases. Or he's been missing some cycles. Um, and he definitely threw a lot away uh, right there at that army. That explains the 60 army supply deficit. This could be the final blow. If Tool decides to keep the pressure on, there's not a lot of army here to respond it. Four Hellions, uh, seven, uh, seven Hellions, sorry, four Hellions, three Hellions uh, are not a lot in response to this. These Roaches absolutely with their plus two, plus two is now finished. Uh, this is the timing attack he was waiting for. He gets his third base and looks like he decides he's going to pull out. And he's going to go home. I... Uh, decided that was enough so looking back here at the Terran uh, still floating in excess of minerals he's hit 5,000 just now he's got a couple of CVs hanging around uh, and he's he's producing a stream looks like a stream of tank hellion out of this fight or out of, out of these buildings um, whatever he wants to do he wants to do it with tank hellion it looks like he's doubling down on this uh, although we do know that Tool likes the tech switch, at least in Zerg CBZ, into some air. So a couple of Vipers here, and we'll do a lot. We'll go a long way towards janking those tanks out of the air. Uh, he's going to continue to expand, making his fifth base straight up here. He is one base ahead, as Zerg tend to need to be. But after destroying his opponent's base, that's going to give him a nice advantage. Force these SCVs to the long distance mine for a while. Mm. He's going to. Use his natural as a siphon, or sorry, his third as a siphon. There's his hive. There's his vipers. Hello, vipers. Hello, roaches. And he's got such a huge army lead. He has to push now or start shaving army off. Uh, this is his opponent. This is his, his moment, I believe, uh, to finish this off. But we do have some movement coming from Asmodian on the other side. Um, his army still heavily tank. Um, actually, tank. Tank Hellbat. As it finds itself, you know, maneuvering around, trying to get a good position here on the third. Scans it, finds nothing there, and is now going to be spotted, um, spotted by the creep and the creep tumors. He's going to get a couple of them as he cleans it up here. And this is kind of, kind of a slow response from Tool. He saw this. He should have seen this a moment ago. Big green ball in the minimap. But you might not have been paying attention. Hey, Shazam Poof with the five cheers. Thanks, brother. Thanks for watching. I'm actually super stoked to have you here. And thanks for getting in a pretty good position. Um, and this is gonna. This should be a good stutter step opportunity for the Zerg. Um, there goes the, the clouds from the Vipers. are going to do a lot of uh, very significant amount of damage. Uh, these Hellbats kind of find themselves stuck between the uh, Evolution Chamber, decided to take it down. They're going to deny plus, uh, plus, three, uh, plus 3 range, uh, but that entire army is cleaned up. It is 52 army supply to 129, although a huge bank on both sides. The Zerg, I understand. The Zerg um, maxed out for a minute, can't spend it. Now we can remax. Protect the production tab. We should be seeing a short stream of army uh, any moment now as he begins to move across the map. Uh, for what I can only assume is the Death Blow. Tank's getting in a position here, trying to take whatever fight they can. He knows the army's there. Uh, he's seen it. He's got sensor towers. And it looks like Tool is done doing his uh, his macro and his cleanup, and he's going he's gonna to make this push in. Uh, deciding not, however, to move into the tanks. Uh, he's going to back it up. 
and choose another angle. Difficult thing about Terran is if your opponent takes the fight uh, in another location that you're not ready for, or you're not in position for, so you get in position, right? You're like, ah, oh, I want the fight right here. I can take this fight. And then they just go around you. It's very difficult sometimes to handle. But looks like he's got a spire around the way. He's going to finish up plus three carapace. Uh, we take a look at any excess buildings. Uh, it doesn't look like he's he made another evolution. Nope, oh, there's a new evolution chamber. He could restart his uh, plus one range if he chose to. Uh, looks like we're getting vehicle damage added on uh, for Asmodian. He's got three starports on the way. I don't think he's going to start growing air. And he's going to to walk into walk into the tanks and walk out. Now, I don't know how I feel about this choice from Tool. I feel like he had the game, or maybe even still easily has the game, but is he's not committing into things. He's and maybe that's my problem when I commit into something and I just die. Um, but definitely walking in and walking out gives them the free damage. Um, maybe get the information and choose whether to walk in or out. Uh, it's hard to tell uh, what he's thinking right now. But he definitely had this game in the bag for a while, and his opponent now seems to be making use of uh, of all these excess minerals and building up an army, at least a positional army, that he's having a hard time having a hard time competing with. He does get that sensor tower, so you know maybe that's the plan. His opponent's not remaking it. Um, this is a pretty exposed planetary fortress. He could get in and get that, um, if so if he so chose to. Uh, but we'll see how this plays out. As he's now kind of bringing queens, he brought his queens over, and he's going to bring them back. It looks like. Plenty of creep spread. If you look at this map, he owns so much of this map in creep spread. And he's only going to continue to push it out even farther. Uh, but he's coming now, taking down rocks, giving himself some maneuverability around this much more uh, st stationary army. Uh, he's going to get that scan, get some tank hits on this, um, and move forward. It looks like he feels confident now. He's in position. He's just going to walk in until he's got a good surround. And looks like he's in the attack now. He's taking some fantastic shots here. Uh, even even walking straight into position, pulling a tank out, uh, letting some Hydros deal with that. Uh, more Hydros than ever uh, streaming into here. They're getting Vikings. Uh, they're getting tanks. They've cleared out everything. Only 12 army supply, 10 army supply left for Asmodian as this Viking lands to try to push him out. And there's a GG. Ooh, that was... Hey, uh... <laughs> those awesome. Sosa says, OMG. Um, so yeah, no, just my advice. If uh, if you're a tool and you're watching that, you definitely had that game a long time ago. Um, and you were almost in danger of giving your opponent a chance to come back. Um, but let's see how you do in game two. Uh, let's see if we see kind of the same thing. Um, Actually, if Tank Hellion is the new meta, let me know. Because I need to plan for Tank Tank Hellion. I've, I don't know if I've seen too much Tank Hellion um, in my life. So that was a very good game. Very first, very good first game for Tool. Uh, he was able to it's really just outpace and out-macro his opponent. He found himself some good positioning, a better army, and really took advantage of some blunders his opponent had made. So we're going to get into game number two. Uh, this one is on Blackwater. And spawning in the... Bottom right hand corner in green it is Hasmodian looking for his first win. Um, in the top left hand corner it's the purple Zerg. He has gone one and two, one and two, and is now looking to 2 0 Hasmodian. Well, he's looking to 2 uh, oh, Asmodian. His name is Tool. Ha-ha. All right. So, what do we have here? Let's take a quick look. We do have Hatch. So, I'm looking at a Hatch gas pool for uh, for Tool. He's looking to go very, very pretty basic, pretty standard. It looks like we're going to get the same out of his opponent. Looks like a very respectful macro game ahead of us. Oh, well, maybe. We'll see. This looks like a scout, but maybe it's cheeky. Maybe. Maybe it's a bunker. So, taking back a uh, look over here at um, kind of the gas that Asmodian has. It's, he has a lot of gas right now. He has a very significant amount of gas um, for being anything but mech or anything but too much gas. So, I could 
I could look at this if I was coming through. I, I could say Reaper, but he has put down a command center, so we're not going to see any early aggression out of Asmodian. Um, I'd say we're not going to see any early aggression out of out of Zerg, but Zerg can pull early aggression out of their butt whenever they want. Just say, hey, I want some early aggression. Um, Chobo Team League, best team league. I don't know. I hear that all their uh, previous admins are a bunch of tools. Wait a minute. Slash S for those who don't know. I was previously an admin on the Chobo Team League. And it's a very good league. It's a very competitive league full of great teams that really strive to help people be better at StarCraft. Um, it's because of Chobo Team League and my last team that I was uh, ever, ever any good at this game. <laughs> that I'm doing the things that I'm doing now. Um, so let me not be too too cheeky. Uh, four Zergs are going to get that SCV. They're going to come back and he's going to macro up a bit. He's going to do some macro things. He's going to get speed. He's going to get himself one of these overlords and some queens. I do like that uh, that tool is heavy on the queens. Um, <laughs> no tool is playing in this game. Um, you're right. Not all the admins were tool. Tool is not... Tool is not a, a collection, a hive mind of all the admins of the CTL. That would be great. Like, who was, the, who was the admin before Tool? Well, Tool was. And what about before that? Well, the other Tool. Which one's that? It's the same guy, but, you know, I'm losing the joke. All right, so the Reaper opted to stay back. He saw what he wanted to see, um, so he doesn't need to go scout again, and he knows that this is coming, and he's staying for the pressure. But he's got Hellions to back him up this time. Um, because they were a little late handling that SCV, they didn't get the stream right across the map. The wall is up this time, and looks like they're going to push back like it's any other Tuesday. Because that's what you do on Tuesday. You push back lings. Tool's also a great band. What's that one song? They do is a song that I sing, like, the first line of all the time. And it's the only part of the song I know. Uh, what was it? Who are you to wave your finger? You must have been out your head. I hold deep in muddy waters. Yep, I'm done. You didn't come here for karaoke. <clears throat> okay, yeah, also a great band, which uh, I believe you might have introduced me to, John. The Pot. He knows the song. Um, I was very, I was very young when that came out. I was what? We were 18 or 19 when Tool was out, right? I think you guys introduced me to it. You guys introduced me to music. Well, you didn't introduce me to music. I was a musician. I kind of still am. But you introduced me to music I hadn't heard yet. Mr. Sam says, I'm blue, abu dee double die abu dee double die abu dee double die I'm having fun. You guys are great. Um, yeah. Oh, man. Short. So, Short, uh, for those in the chat, he said Short went on and on about them in tech school. So, Short was a buddy of ours um, in the early days of the Air Force. Um, and he was like, probably the he was the Shazam poof of our group and then he went away and we never saw him again what happened to short is he still in the military so for those who are hanging in the chat and those on YouTube I'll give you some, some background uh, the way out is through is an old buddy of mine I've known now for 15 years oh here we go great connections hellbat transformations uh, Cyclone's getting some great hits on these queens. Now, this is going to be about transfuses as this great pressure from Asmodian streaming across the map, hoping to clean this up and take the game. See, when I say you keep your Hellbats, this is why, because eventually you put your Hellbats together into Hellbats and you march across the map and you screw stuff up. You start doing some fantastic damage and then you get pushed back by Roaches. Um, great play by Tool there. Um, absolutely perfect timing response. I can only imagine um, he saw this coming and absolutely transformed. Or absolutely spawned the perfect number of roaches to push this back uh, as this one hellbat escapes and lives and might live to collect a pension um so yeah i've known john no, it's 2004 yeah i've known john for about 15 years probably the only person i keep in touch with from those days but yeah short was like the shazam poof of the group and then he went away and and uh I don't really speak to him again. I, I assume he went on and made better friends, because he deserved better friends than us. He was much cooler than we were. 
<laughs> All right. So uh, let's take a look at this map because you're here for StarCraft, not KC Life History. Uh, take a look at the Zerg. Um, good a little oversaturation on the main, a little oversaturation on the natural. Um, should be good soon. Tool's pretty pretty good at keeping up with this. He's going to pull back down to the third and has some pretty good worker saturation. He's got 54 workers to his opponent's 37. It looks like hasn't been staying on top of his macro. He was putting a lot of lot of his weight into that push. He was, in fact, this might be what he has practiced because you kind of look his his um. Look at his minerals. It looked like he fell apart around there. He, um... Oh, oh there we go. This hell, Hellbat came back alive and, and decided to, to engage. Uh, and he gets pushed back. He knows it was coming. So when we take a look at his minerals, um... This timing push from Asmodian looks to have been his, his most rehearsed and practiced build. And since it got pushed back, he wasn't ready for what came after. Um, and he finds himself significantly farther behind in worker supply and army supply. Um... And what would have probably, which, which usually probably is for him, a um, a game winning game winning push. Um, so now we've got to adjust and handle, and we might start seeing these minerals go a little higher um, as he pushes his command center up to the top. I do like this wall; it also will help, and it'll help him for quite some time in being supply blocked. Uh, but it is a few excess minerals um, that I think if Tool wanted to all in right now and uh, push across the map he might have a victory on uh, an uh, ungodly number of queens uh, fantastic for defense fantastic for creep spread I'd like to see some more creep spread out of him I'd like to see uh, he sees also I'm, I'm talking about Asmodian's minerals and the capability to, to late game but Tool's also gotten about 3,000 minerals uh, at this point that you know we'd all love to, to see and this is going to be about it's about injects it's about there's that macro hatch there you go that's going to help him kind of get some of those minerals out uh, definitely don't want to move those move those drones because then you might have more minerals. Um, all right, queen's coming over. Gonna make some uh, make their way, make more creep tumors. Keep this vision all the way across the map. I do like that about Tool and his his vision. Uh, he does push out. This is a very good highway right here, especially when he needs it. Um, he's finding himself in a good position. Uh, but it does look like Asmodian's doing a better job of, of catching up. He was half supply, and if you take a look right now, the numbers say it all. He is only, well, now 16 supply behind his opponent. Um, this absolute increase in production facilities is going a long way. Now, he's going back to tank, tank Hellion. Um, so something as simple as Mutilus could almost solve this? No, I don't want to say that, because there are Cyclones, and it would be really easy with this setup to switch into heavy Cyclone production. Um. <laughs> Suzanne Poof uh, says, ah, yes, 15 years ago, sucking on those wood blocks. Uh, for those who don't know, Suzanne Poof is quite a young person. In his old mid-20s. He's so young. Um... I really need a co-caster. I need to get you all on board a little more often. All right, so uh, looks like take a look at the production tab. Take a look around the base. Let's take a stock of things. So Tool has gone up to Hydra Tech. He's starting the Hive, Hydra Tech. So hi he's working into Hive Tech. He's got Hydras. He's got a macro hatch. He's got a fair number of queens. They're doing a, They're working on their creep spread. Looks like he wants to take this base soon. Uh, and he's got a lot of excess minerals that he could do something with. But his workers are ahead and his army's ahead. He's in a really good position. Um, interesting location for his army there. In case he wanted to hide it from somebody that was right here. Um, from the other side, we do have a push out of a lot of Hellions. Now, these Hellions are plus one vehicle weapons. They're going up against plus one, plus one, and they're going up against roaches. Um, so their blue flames are strong. Um, but without these tanks to support them, they're in a very precarious position now. they got to find good connections. Their distance is short, so it's going to be a lot about positioning and finding himself in a good position. So let's see if Asmodian has what it takes to make this work, but Tool has just spiraled, spiraled up. He's almost completed 2-2. If he can hesitate just a little bit, he'll have plus one range on his Hydras. He'll have plus two, plus two on his entire army. He's got six Hydras in the way. He's got more Roaches. Defender's advantage is going to go a long way. There's nothing streaming across the map for Asmodian. So the problem with Terran at this point is they are slow, even though... Hellbats can transform in the Hellions. They're waiting on the speed of these tanks. And any second now, this is going to be the timing attack. As he pushes forward, he's got plus two, plus two. And there goes Hydra's, uh, Hydra's range. 
Uh, this should be a complete cleanup for Tulis. He's not only got a, uh, the army advantage, uh, he's got the upgrade advantage. And he should march across this map right now. Ex honestly, excellent timing for Tool. He waited just for that right moment when the upgrade's finished. And as soon as he got in the range for attack, the, the Hydralis range finished. Uh, I'd love to see him march across the map right now and finish the game. But it looks like he's going to opt to secure himself a safer victory. He's going to plant down uh, his hatchery. That's going to be his fifth base. Uh, behind this, he is producing plus three, plus three. Um, actually, plus three vehicle has started now for Asmodian. So, you know, he's going to play a little bit of catch up. He did finish plus one armor uh, during that fight. There's another commencer. He's going to take uh, a relatively safe fourth here. It's going to give him a chance to come back in the game, but he is significantly behind, and he's got to make the right plays. He's got to be, I think, a little defensive right now. Um, maybe a questionable move out for him as a timing um, might be a little off, but it does look like he's trying to go around the long way and find himself a, a, a more advantageous position. But we'll see in a moment uh, where he's deciding to go. However, the army on tool side, I think I said this after the last game, he does sit back a bit until he's sure he's got the win. Um... Alright, so no road there, no path for him to get up. Uh, nothing nothing to airlift him out. As he's going to see his opponent coming in the range now. Uh, and instead of opting to go back, it looks like he's opting to potentially base trade. It is a pain in the butt to base trade at Terran. We don't have a lot of flying units uh, for a tool. But I'll do my best to keep both sides of this fight congruent. Um, as he marches right in, he's got nothing to be afraid of. Uh, his opponent starts to take down his wall. It uh, looks like he's going to run back now. He's going to run back now that he's Asmodian is in his base. It would be a shame if Asmodian got into a, a very defensible position. Um, he is going to miss that uh, plus three damage. Um, but once once Asmodian kind of gets into a strong position here and sieges up, it will be a difficult thing to break, especially right here on the top of a ramp. Uh, he's got Cyclones here for all the anti-air, as long as he controls it as well. Uh, this, will, this will be a very dangerous thing for Tool to walk into. I talked about him not being aggressive enough before, but this might be the opposite of that. Good black, good clouds going down. Uh, you start to see the health of the tank start to drain. Uh, Queen's in the front, but these Hydras are having a hard time getting up this ramp. This might have been the best fight that Asmodian could have taken, but it still looks to be potentially maybe too little too late. He got in here, he got some drone kills. Uh, he killed a couple high, uh, very important tech structures. Uh, but Tool comes out of this with 194 supply and 156 army supply. Uh, these Vipers taking a little bit of uh, energy left one hydralis facing down the remaining hellbat um, but it did look like Asmodian probably took the best fight he could wasn't enough um, not against the plus three plus two Ooh, I say plus three plus two uh, Asmodian now has plus three plus two as these roaches move their way across the map now I expect tool um, might start shaving off some roaches eventually, replacing them with more Hydralis. Plus three armor has started. Um, and it looks like he's going to pick up that command center and move it away. Now, the whole army has been scanned. He knows where the rat. He's He's got tanks in position here. Looks like he wants to take this fight now. It's a fight he wants to take earlier, but like the last fight, he pokes in a bit, gets hit with some tank fire, and decides it was better not to be there. So he's given his opponent a few free pop shots. He's going to try to get in here and get some viper... looks like some viper uh, abductions. Um, but he's going to pull them back behind the army. All right, trying to get in a position here. Trying to find an angle what he likes to attack. A little indecisive. Knows that the, the fourth still isn't in position. Um, there's a couple tanks and Thors being pulled into the army. Um... Pulling those Vipers back, deciding that he needs to pull the whole whole army back. Uh, but he's got 114 supply to that 47. He could he could just about suicide in that army and take the fight. I don't know if he knows how far ahead he is at the moment, but all his major tech structures are, are kind of being reinstituted. He's putting down a spire uh, right now. Nope, oh, there we go. Vipers being uh, he needs to take control of them and not just have them flee. Uh, based on their their damage, and the, the Vikings are going to go home. So, would have been would have been a good time to have say some mutas earlier, uh, before the Vikings started coming out in heavy heavy fashion. But if I know anything about Tool in his previous play, I do expect to see Broodlords, uh, not mutas or, or corruptors. Well, maybe some Broodlord corruptor combo mix here, as he continues to drone up. Uh, back home, more tanks uh, being made for Asmodi. He's really committed to this tank play. 
and it's working. It's causing Tool to question whether or not he's gonna really dive into anything. On the other end, this is what I like to call poop in your pants. He's sitting at home, he's turtled. He's trying his best to stay alive uh, and really take this game to the end, but he's turtling a little too hard. He's got uh, excess SCVs here. Um, now he's doing fine, up on his third. He's got a whole bunch of SCVs not doing anything. Especially now that he's max supply, he doesn't have to worry about constantly building supply depots. I might build a couple extra. He needs to really kind of, you know, do some homework to clean up everything. Um, there was a dump, and see, this is a dump of command center energy. Um, when you kind of embroiled into the middle of your game, sometimes you forget. And it's, it's these little mistakes that this is. these are minerals he could have had, and he's actually doing a much better job this game of spinning his minerals. You notice that he's at 200 and he's under he's under 6,000 I think is the lesson to take away from this. He's doing a much better job than he did the last game. He's got upgrades. He's 3-2. He's got he's working on um, air air damage now. Uh, more Hellions in production. More tanks going to join the fight. Uh, this is going to be the army he has to fall back to if there's a counter push if he can't clean this up now. But he's moving forward with tanks. He's moving forward with Hellions. Um, this army he's used this seems to be his uh his TVZ army, and he's going to need the siege up shortly. He's hoping to find, it looks like he might find these units out of position. He doesn't know they're coming from the rear. It looks like, there we go, he's going to siege up the tanks. He's going to trap a couple Hellions. They're only going to make it out because the tanks are being destroyed. Um, he's finding roaches at his back door, hydras at his back door. He's going to go ahead and fly. These Vikings in and away, kind of pulling the army out. That's a really good pathing. He decides to take a route that's least likely to run him into hydrogen. He runs him into the main base and then they, they trap themselves so they can't immediately follow him home. Um, but now we are looking at about one-third the army size. He's doing a much better job of spending his minerals um, but he's not making them anywhere near as fast. This entire game has been in tools favor for, for economy. He's on five bases. I imagine he's if this game went any longer, he'd continue to be on six. We just hit the fourth base uh, for a tool. And this is this is when players who are new to the game this is what you need to look at. As long as you have a bigger army it doesn't matter what it is. You have the bigger army. If you are this much bigger, composition doesn't matter anymore. And we're seeing this push now. Uh, this planetary fortress is going to do some damage and this is this is uh, this is Tool's fault. He's going to keep holding back until he's sure he's going to win, but he's got the money to max out on Zerglings. He can take the fights that he wants to take. Um, well, let me rephrase that. He needed he needed to take that fight that closes out soon. Um, he will either eventually win because he's got the continued uh, economic growth, or he will give up the game because he's not committing to the pushes. He is being scared away by a handful of of tanks. And it's scary pushing into tanks. Um, but this is definitely an army he can handle. This is definitely an army he could A-move and, and win this game. Um, but the longer he gives his opponent, the more he puts himself at a disadvantage. Um, which I imagine might be a trait we continue to see if Tool is in the... Um, if Tool continues into the round of 16. Uh, it doesn't look like he... Will, though, if I'm looking at this, he's two losses, one, two each. Um, there we go. He's got Corruptors now. He's got the army he wants. Um, you know, which might be interesting because Corruptors are interesting. But the only thing they can shoot at are things that can't shoot at the rest of your army. Um, but looks like that's, I mean, that's all the tanks. Uh, there's one there. We take a look at the units tab. Uh, one tank, nine Vikings are all that stand between this army and complete victory. And he's going to wait for his queens to come in. He's going to morph in some broodlords uh, to really make sure he has this fight. Behind this on the production tab, uh, more tanks being produced. A marine. He is so ready. He's, he's feeling so rough. He's going to make his like first marine this entire game uh, somewhere at the 20, 21 minute mark. Um, these broodlords are going to come in and this is what he knows. This feels safe. Uh, he can he can do blue boards all day. Uh, yeah, so this planetary is one planetary. It's one planetary versus broodlings versus hydralis versus roaches versus ravagers. There's tanks that are streaming into this fight, and there's a GG. Tool takes this fight two to one or two two to zero.
It's me and Joel just talking for three hours straight. All right. Last game. This one I say for last because because last time I put the best one like first and y'all left. So now I say the best one for last. This was Pesosa versus Surreal. Um, Pesosa, so far his record is uh, he's won two games. He's only dropped one map. Uh, Surreal has he won one two. He won two one and got a walkover. So we haven't seen a lot of play in Surreal. They are 12 and 27 on the um, on the Elo. It's a ZVZ, and it starts on Neon Violet Square. Go right into this match. I'm gonna like talk for three hours and just I gotta like jaw exercises and just like the jaw rotation. One two, one two. Just, all right, enough jaw rotations. All right, this is gonna be a best of three. Starting on Neon Violet Square, spawning in the top left hand corner. In the yellow, it is Pasosa. Look at those manners. In the bottom right hand corner, the green Zerg. Surreal. Both of these players have not lost a set in this group. It does look like it could be the best match of the series. And the pressure's on. Pesosa. Surreal. Pesosa dropping his spawning pool first. Signature move. He will drop a spawning pool. He will then get a ga he will then drop a hatch and it will go gasless for a little bit. Looks like Surreal is opting for spawning pool at That was about sixteen. Yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, he's going for hatch. He's going for spawning pool for spawning pool hatch gas. Um, both of these very very standard, nothing aggressive, economic, safe builds. Nobody's looking to to play uh, flipping co coin flips. Nobody's looking to coin flip. So we do have a scout drone coming out of here for surreal. But Pesosa says, "I don't need I don't need a scout. This is safe." He goes spawning pool first. It's he feels it's safe. It's out. A little faster than his opponent, right? Yeah, I think a little faster. You can tell by the six slings he's got in production. No, wait, wait, I'm flipping him. I'm flipping him. The six slings that Surreal has in production. What is he going to do with him? This is the key moment. So there's, Surreal is Surreal could put on a little bit of pressure, try to deny a natural, or we could keep these home defensively. Um, Pesosa has only ever gotten four lings in this case. Uh, he's been playing safe. He's been playing defensively, and they're going to come out, and they're going to they're good. Look at that. Queued up. This drone's days are numbered. He's going to find himself uh, in a precarious position. And the queen's going to inject. So, drone sees what he needs to see. He sees that there is a natural. He sees uh, there's nothing crazy coming his way. And he's in response, he's not going to panic. He's going to continue to drone up. He's going to continue to do a macro game. Um, I always like that queen moving down. Get your maximize the times your queens have uh, to inject. So you inject the first one, maybe second inject, and then you move it down here. Uh, but he is queen heavy as well. We're gonna have three queens on the map here, uh, potentially a creep tumor queen. Uh, there's the bane ling's nest. It gives the queen a little place to hide. Uh, if there's a ling flood, it can step in here and prevent surface area from being an issue. Uh, Pesosa is going to take this small third base near immediately. Now, this is a nice hidden base. It's hard to see. Um, it's hard to get a Overlord back there without taking Queen damage. Uh, it's not a full base, though. It's not a full base. This is a half base. It starts with, I want to say, eight. Yeah, eight uh, drones mining. Permit. More, four mineral patches, half the mineral patches of a normal base. Right, there goes the Bandling Nest. Let's finish up. There's the uh, Evolution Chamber. Speed's about to finish for Pesosa, and it looks like he's going to go across the map and do a little bit of scouting. I wouldn't say poke. He doesn't. He knows he doesn't have the links to poke, and he's just making a couple that will probably stay at home. 
and you know be that defensive base. Uh, I'm wrong. These other two are coming up to join, so he's going to poke with six. Um, he's going to run into double evolution, uh, evolution chamber, roach warren, spine crawler. So he's going to see. Um, he's going to see everything, and he's going to get out with all but one. He only lost one link to that scout. He got a plethora of information. He knows there's a wall. There's a spine crawl. This is this is a hundred minerals. Now he knows he has on top of his opponent. Wait a minute. Yep, a yeah, hundred minerals ahead. He does know he has to answer. He answered. Or he may. Have, he knows he's going to get into a roach game. Excuse me. Um, he didn't see any gas. He wouldn't have. This is the first gas. Yeah, wow, this is the first gas that surreal is taking. Uh, his opponent has been building gas for a little bit. But that allows Pososa to get plus one range a little bit faster. He's already got it going. And that should give him an advantage on any early conflicts. Um, at least until there's a pause in tackle. We already have a hatchery going, so I expect to see plus two range going about as soon as it finishes. Uh, so is usually generally really tightened on top of that. All right, see that? Look at that. Five out of eight. Already mostly saturated. Very tiny base. Very tiny base. Um, on the other hand, his opponent has taken the riskier. Oh, excuse me, the riskier third base that is fully saturated. Even moving the spine up to defend it. There's two queens. Are going to continue. Injecting and expanding the creep up here. Um, I expect Sosa may swiftly expand behind it to meet this pace, but at least um, for a little bit, this will give Pososa a chance to, to catch up. Or get, excuse me, this will give Surreal a chance, chance to close that gap again. But really, though, let's take a good look at those worker count. It's 13 workers. Uh, there's 13 worker advantage in Pososa's favor, and they're both droning up now. 13 drones out of Surreal, so let me eat my words real quick. Um, Surreal has just aggressively expanded in workers. Uh, this was a very heavy army early on. He committed a lot of drones to it, and that explains the early excuse me, the early uh, worker deficit, but 13 workers. Uh, that's a lot of good injects coming out on, on the same time, or maybe just a lot of larvae ignored. Um, hard to tell, but there you go. He's taking two gases, and he's gearing up. He's got plus one finishing. He's got plus one overlord speed. And behind this, he's starting some roaches. On the other side of it, Pososa has got 13 roaches, uh, as opposed to the 13 workers uh, his opponent pulled out. Uh, quick look at the, the units tab. You can see it's a 17 to 5 roach lead. Now, this army is going to be spotted, and I expect to see a lot more roaches in production uh, really quickly for Surreal. Oh, we do have Overlord speed now. He's going to go in. He's going to see what he can see. We have three more roaches, four more roaches in production for Surreal, and this Overlord is moving. But on the other side of the map, or sorry, in the middle of the map, as the push happened, there were a couple of Ravengers picked off an Overlord. Uh, Surreal has started. In response to this, instead of beefing up uh, the number of roaches, he's opted for a spire. Now, he's got the worker advantage. Uh, he does not have the army advantage. No, wait. Yeah, he doesn't have the army advantage, though. So, holding on to this fight is very important. Actually, throwing away his roaches here is, uh, is a very big deal. Um, he was already at a disadvantage, and now he's just losing them at a faster rate than he's killing them. Uh, this is absolutely... Um, exactly what Pososa wants to happen right now. He doesn't want to give him a chance to, to get out these additional 15 roaches, for example. Now, he's got the spine down. He's picking off roaches as they're coming out while doing damage to the hatch. A couple corrosive vials, and he finds himself in a good position. And this is a done hatch. Oh! Oh, he's going to go back in for it. He's going to dive on it. Uh, there we go. Ten more points of damage, and that is down. And he's going to walk away as those 15 roaches catch back up. Um, I think he feels this is an even trade. Pososa feels like he's going to trade even enough to make this worth it, and then he backs up, bringing all his reinforcements with him, roach speed, watching them hustle. Uh, now, if he falls him too far, so real falls him too far, there we go. And this one roach will follow him just far enough to know that no, no shenanigans are going to happen. Um, he'll either sacrifice his life or he'll turn around. There it is. Okay, taking a look back here at what he's been up to while we were fighting, uh, Pososa is... He's not teched up at all. He's not expanded. Oh, he's expanded. I'm blind. 
Uh, he's absolutely expanded to what he feels is a safer fourth. Um, he's got kind of three and a half bases. His opponent actually opting for the gold base. Um, this is a little sneaky. If this isn't spotted, uh, it could really help him come back into this game. But he is definitely coming back from a deficit right now. Uh, up here, still long distance mining as he's making a uh, remaking his third and his fourth. So this is always dangerous. Um, having at least your current hatcheries queue up to your secret base. Um, oh, here we go. Let's watch this real quick. So, you remember that spire? It came with mutalisks. And he doesn't know these are out. He doesn't know these exist. This tech has not been presented yet. So, this will be the first time Pososa sees it. Uh, if we take a look at his bases, he doesn't have spores. So, watch that production tab. See how fast his spores come in response. Uh, he's going to want to get in here and get as much damage as he can now. He's got a queen. He's got the numbers for a queen. He has drones. He's definitely got the numbers to kill drones. Um, and he's getting so many drones right now. So many workers queuing up from this. Hydralisks are now being made to answer this from Pesosa. Um, but this is one of the few times that a Mutalisk army is an army. On the other end of the map, Pesosa has decided he's got to march. He's got to move across the map to answer this uh, with his own force. And so he meets the entirety of Surreal's army, uh, remaining army on this side, while Mutalisk attempt to do some damage uh, on the opposite side of the map, but he's going to opt to go home instead. He's going to opt to try to fight this army. Now, the thing that Mutalisks don't do very well is kill roaches, uh, maybe less so ravagers. Uh, they're a great army for picking up everything that's not here. Uh, and while roaches can't shoot up and, and ravagers uh, only have the biles, uh, the numbers of Mutalisks aren't necessarily those that are going to end this game. So this is a, a, a interesting choice to pull back. Uh, but I guess you didn't have anything else to combat this, so uh, I don't know what else you would do. You were, you were behind, the army decided to take advantage of you being on this side of the map. The Mutalists were, were an interesting, interesting dedication. You dedicated, he dedicated a lot to these Mutalists. But these roaches are going for the spire. They don't want anything else that they can't shoot up at. One more Mutalist in, in the production. Um, but 20, 20 lings behind this, uh, hoping to rally in and help clean this army up. Uh, over here, the natural's gone down, and he's moved up to the third. Uh, Oh, it looks like there was a cancellation on that hidden fourth base, or at least it was spotted while we were watching the Mutalist. And his Ravager doing fantastic damage. Mutalist trying to get in here and, and do the little bit that they can to clean this up and prevent their base from going down, but the Ravagers were straight up ignoring them, going for this base, opting. There it is. Those are the Crusted Biles. Mutalist flying away, not quite sure where those Biles were landing. Sometimes it's hard to spot, and they're going to get almost all the bases. There is only the layer left. Only the layer and a handful of, of drones as they're... I mean, there's... Wait, uh, uh, let me, don't let me say lies. Um, there's only a small army back at home for Pesosa. Um, so while he may have gotten all of the tech and most of the income, he now has to do w with a very low number of Hydralisk. And, and the army's going to come down here and be doing the Queez and the Spores and the Hydralisk. It looks like that's going to be enough to scare Surreal out of his... out of his safe... safety? Out of his safe spot. Um, and the mutas go home, and he looks back here to lick his wounds. He's rebuilding a hydralis den, a roach warren. Um, he's got to rebuild bases, and luckily he had the the. There it is, the hatch, uh, the money for it. There's a new hidden hatchery up there, and I have to assume uh, that gold didn't pan out. Sorry, I missed that one. He is bringing all of his. Um, all of his vision back, though. The Mutalists on the map represent too much of a threat for him to keep his overlords out on the map. And there goes the Hive. Uh, the lair is now mutating. Uh, it looks like he's wanting to take this to the next tech while his opponent is, is flying around. Um, really unable to find these Mutas. They're great for poking, but if he finds himself too far out of position, we could see that base trade again. All of the tech kind of being... kind of had to be restarted for surreal. And that's not just about... Um, the cost of it, but that's slowing down everything. He's slowing down the the production. The, he's got to re-ramp up, uh, get his minerals going. If you look at his workers, he's still down to 19 workers to Pesosa's 85. He's got 77 army to his 42, and what he's got to show for it right now is just a, a slightly more mobile army, but not a dangerous one. 
he's got three roaches and three hydralis coming to join the fight over here because it looks like he wants to try to get something done but i'm not sure if he's aware of how big his uh, opponent's army has gotten since the last time he poked he did not get a significant number of damage in he's going to come up here to a handful of spore crawlers and a lot of roaches and a lot of ravagers Um, this is almost, as long as he maintains enough of an army back here to stall um, or maintain some kind of defense, but also could march across this map right now and finish this game. There's uh, Lurker Den being made. That's a good, that's a good follow-up when you find yourself in this dangerous position. Uh, a Lurker Den, Lurkers can change the game if the opponent is caught unaware. Um... Kind of like Banelings can can do uh, some fantastic things. Lurkers can too, but it does require Pososa to make a mistake. You notice he does have an Overseer. He does have... Uh, he should have range on these units. Um, wait a minute. Uh, range, 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 range. I don't know. There's an upgrade button somewhere. Anyway. Um, but those look like Pososa's opting to move out. And the place he's going to look first is his gold base, because he's tried to take it once. It looks like he's even still mining from it, because he had units queued up to um, go there. There it is. John says, when behind, Lurker Shrine. Um, but it does require him to make a mistake. It does require him to slip up. And it looks like he's going to expand behind this. You know, it's nice to expand when you attack. And make sure you don't fall behind on the macro while you're focusing on your micro. Um, he is over double army supply, double workers, uh, just double supply in general, like more than a little bit. Um, Pasos is looking for these extra bases, though. This is nice. This is this is well thought out. He says, um, how is he still in this game? Maybe he's hiding a base. Um, if he goes to the north, I'll, it'll, it'll confirm that thought. But it looks like he's just going to come down here and just start cleaning up the rest of the army. Um, it's a real, uh, small move out for Surreal down in the bottom right. Looks like his mutas are, are leaving to come home. Um, or, sorry, returning home after seeing the attack. Um, I'm just going to rally up everything he has, because if he loses, if this army gets into his main base, there's so much to lose. The rocks aren't down. This debris is still there, so it's not a, an avenue that he necessarily wants to push in. This is that Pososa mistake. That being said, I don't know if that would be big enough of a mistake. I don't know if uh, Pososa couldn't just walk over the lurkers and get done what he needed to get done. Uh, but these mutas are going to try to go across the map, and and deal the damage on the other side. They are going to pull Pososa back a little bit. It's going to give him some time to continue to, to mine up. Um, if you look at the production tab, Pososa is still making workers. Uh, he's got six right now about to produce. He is, he is definitely committing to a long game if he needs it. And these mutas definitely are been thrown, is thrown into side. He's, he's trying to deal with them right now. Um, some of the army kind of split in half here. That gold base was retaken. Uh, retaken shortly after losing that that original third. He's still got that back army though. He's got that half base he hasn't taken yet. Alright, looks like he is uh, gonna split. He's gonna split the uh, this is smart. I like this. He's gonna leave the hydrals at home and he's gonna go forward with his roaches and get everything he can get done. When the, if the mutas decide to deal damage or decide to skip him then the uh, hydrals will be there. That's smart. But, I mean, it's smart because he should have twice the army, right? Like, this might be a little bit of shaving. He's going to pull up some Corruptors. See, a lot there. The Roaches, uh, Roaches shave off a bunch of Banelings. And then he's going to find this gold. He's going to hit it. Oh, there we go. That's a cancel without even a commitment. Uh, there he goes. He sees it's been canceled now. The Hydralis are being pulled uh, potentially over to the save. And it looks kind of like he's trying to decide which angle to come from. He's Maybe he's playing some games, some vision games. He sees this base hasn't been remade. He's got to know his opponent is out of minerals on his main base. He's got seven over here, and luckily he transferred everything over there. We do have a fight now. Looks like he's, he's suiciding into the lurkers, but it doesn't matter if you aren't there to be hit. And these roaches are taking some fights with these lings. Um, even though these are only lings, there's just not a lot of army here. These, these mutas take a lot of time to go through a roach, and he has the army supply to do it. It's 190. He's just shaving off army supply to make better things. There are corruptors on the way. There are brood lords on the way. Um, this looks very reminiscent of the games with Tool and their ZBCs, where they were not quite sure how to finish this off, how to close the game off. Um, I think this shows a lot of respect here 
uh, from Pososa for Surreal. He really, really is taking his time in closing this game out. Um, doesn't want to rush into what he thinks would be uh, an ultimate defeat. Now we take a quick look at things from top to bottom. You can see we have um, some... He's starting to mine out at everything. Um, he's had to expand. His, his three primary mining bases are now in the center of the map. Um, he's putting down heavy spine crawlers, heavy spore crawlers to protect this, um, you know, out, outer bases. A couple spore crawlers here. That is a lot of broodlords. If I understand my count right, that should be 11. Wait, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Nope, 13. Sorry, it's 12 per line on the bottom right there. Um, that is a lot of Broodlords. That is a lot of Hydralis. Um, and if I take a look at the Unistab, there are only four Beetleists to deal with this. And there are Lurkers. The Hydralis deal with the... Um, that is cute. The Hydralis are queued up to follow the brood, Broodlords. Now, it doesn't look like a lot of Hydralis, but they're under the Broodlords. They are all hidden, and they're all auto-following whoever the first Broodlord is. So nobody's getting ahead of each other. They're moving together as one very slow army. And behind this, you see uh, Surreal's getting plus one air and plus three carapace. I I think I'd rather see him expand and focus his minerals on on his, on his economy. But what we're going to see here is he's going to take his time uh, coming up this ramp. He's going to force the opponent to move, and he's moved right into Hydralis. They get the Lurkers. One, two, three Lurkers down. They move back. They're going to let the Broodlings take care of all this damage as they move in, and they are cleaning up. These are free units, ladies and gentlemen. They don't cost anything. You can't fight the Broodlings. It would be a shame to fight the Broodlings. And another round goes in, and they're on top. They're absolutely on top of this hatchery. Um, the Corruptors are, are killing the Overlords. There's the GG. Well played from Surreal. Uh, first game. Looks like it's going to go to Pososa. Oh. What a game. All right. This next map. Um, if you had to guess. Um, and you guessed back Black Pink, you'd be right. Because half our, half our players play Black Pink or Neon Violet or both. Um... So we're going to get into Black Pink now. Game number two. Um, we saw that game. A lot of Pososa dominating very early on. He completely owned the battlefield and pushed his opponent. Uh, kind of, kind of. he was desperate the whole time. Like, Surreal never found a footing to not be desperate. What we saw was Pososa was constantly giving him an opportunity to come back. He was constantly giving him a chance to, to build up an army. Um, but I think what Pososa wants to do here is go for the throat maybe a little faster so we're going to get into this game as it is currently 1-0 best of three spawning in the top right hand corner the red of the unstoppable machine Pososa in the bottom left hand corner in the green coming in for his Comeback of the year, it is surreal. Right, so taking again look at their record, Pesosa has uh, he two owed Asmodian, he two one tool, and surreal had two one tool, and uh, got a walkover with Asmodian. So theoretically, these are absolutely equally matched opponents. This game will tell us. This game will tell us if Pososa can close this out as a 2-0. This game will tell us if Surreal can tie it up and give him a chance to return. First six links coming across the map. He had very similar builds from both opponents. They both went for a pool first, followed by a, a hatch. Now, Pososa, uh, if he's doing the same thing, he should make about four links in response to this. Or he should be making four links, not in response to this. Um, just kind of a cautious number of links. Now we'll see what his response is as soon as he sees these, these links come up here. Um, they are they are now striking, and he's he queued up two more links. So his response to six links is six links. 
Now, he's going to have to juggle with these first four. He's going to have to wait for just the right moment. You don't want to throw six lings against, or four lings against six. Now it's eight. Uh, he has not started any more lings. It looks like he's going to wait for these queens to come down. He let it finish. Pososa let it finish, and he's going to come down here with this queen and start this fight. Um, and he's going to continue to put some more lings. He was just in time, just in time to keep this from going down, and just in time to kill off just barely every single ling that came across the map. Now we do have a couple more flooding across the way. Uh, both of them are going to be pushing back Overlord from their base. Um, this was, so far, it looks like the minimum response needed from Pososa. A fantastic. It's like dodging the punch by the width of a piece of paper. Um, yeah, Pososa says he thinks the Zerg's going to win. Uh, but you know, I don't necessarily like this continual flood of things by Surreal. Uh, this is kind of a pause to see if you know any more commitment coming from Pososa. Um, He's going to kind of scout out to the bottom of the ramp, make sure there's nothing there. Uh, more lings, however, being made by Surreal. Um, kind of a mix of lings and drones. Uh, he's either trying to psych out his opponent, uh, like he's going to push across with some more lings, or he's trying to have some safety lings for a counterattack. He's got this queen way up here, which is very susceptible to the lings that Pososa currently has if they get us around. So there's the there's the standard spine crawler counterattack defense uh, uh, from Surreal. So just a couple, just a couple lings that were, uh, I would say, a waste. Not a waste, uh, maybe a little much of an overcommitment from Surreal. It did allow, look, it is going to allow uh, Pososa to expand behind this. He's going to take a third, um, a relatively quick third, uh, compared to his opponent. And this queen is getting some nice aggressive creep. Um, not opting, not wasting anything on a spine crawler. He's going for the evolution chamber. Um, Sticking to potentially just sticking to lings and, and getting that plus one. I don't see any roach warns down. There is only one gas, uh, not not even full saturation here. Looks like Pososa has a plan. He has a good, solid plan, and he's trying to be minimal about it. Now, Surreal, I actually really like this from Surreal. He has no gas yet. Nope, oh, nope. He did not have any gas a second ago when I looked at it. He now has gas. Um, he waited until after the attack, after the pressure, he tried to get a cancel. Um, he was really saving up his gas for Roach Warren. He didn't need any any speed, any link speed. Something now that um, Pososa has. Now, I still like this minimum commitment from Pososa. He's got five links. Um, that was maybe, you know, four more links than he needed to make the defense. And it was enough that there was a counterattack. He could kind of do some, some juggling. Um, so, uh, oh, here we go. We have some predictions from the chat. I'm going to read these real quick. Um, so Pososa says he thinks Zerg's going to win. Uh, Shazam Poof says Zerg always wins. And the way I just threw says, while we're making predictions, I think they'll both go bio. <laughs> uh, they're all bio. All right. So these things are going to kind of get in. Looks like he was trying to get some scouting, but that's a really good wall. A lot of queens here from Surreal. Um, as I said before, I like queens. You you can have too many, but uh, a good early number of queens is, is one of those defenses that allows you um, to also macro, right? Uh, also get out your, your creep spread. Now, what he's not doing is spreading creep, and there it is. He's spreading creep. He's got three queens. He's got a wall. Um, but I look back here at Pesosa. He's got roaches. He's got, what's that, eight roaches? Nine roaches. He's got a uh, queen pushing back an overlord. Uh, going into high, uh, going into the la uh, layer tech, excuse me. Uh, starting to gas up. Now, this is a very macro-oriented build. It's going to build up a little faster uh, than what his opponent's got. And he's doing it while being relatively safe. Um, he can push back any attack with these roaches. He's got a handful of queens spread out in different directions, uh, injecting. But only one queen. Only one queen more than than, than uh, each base. And it's been doing a fantastic job of keeping the creep going. Uh, it seems like he's just very minimal. There's even a macro hatch just went down. Just a whole 300 minerals that he's got for extra larva now. Um, and he's done it on the guise of being just prepared enough for an attack. He's got good positions on each of his overseers, kind of to see all possible directions. The only way his opponent gets out 
Um, without being spotted, if he goes through his third here, up and around. Um, and so that's always that like, you have just enough space. And he's, like, he's taking the time to deny his opponent's vision. He's doing all these things to stay on top. And I'm actually really impressed with what he's got going here. Um, there we go. More overlord pressure. And you think at this point, we, you know, uh, Surreal's actually doing a bubbling a bit and not pulling, pulling him back. He sees him dying. Um, Alright. So we have, that's, I believe, the third overlord. Now, all the vision belongs to Pesoso. He's been a king of information so far in this entire game. Uh, for the entire, this entire, um, this entire group. Um, so he's actually, I think he's going to be a joy to watch, um, end of the round of 16. And I think he's already, according to the games we've watched, he's already in it. Um, so he's actually going to take a, a fourth base with a Mac, he's got a Macarach, he's taking a fourth base. He is up in army supplies, up in workers, and this is going to be this, like, spiral of macro that he takes on his opponent. Um, just an absolute beating, as these roaches are all moving forward to attack. Now, gets in here with an overseer, nice bit of speed, he's going to see what he has. He sees the entire army of his opponent. Um, there we go. A couple hydralisks. Um, starts, he's about to finish his own hydralisk den. He's about to finish plus two. He's got plus one carapace on the way. He is excellent sniping of overlords here. He's keeping, that's 100 minerals, 100 minerals, 100 minerals, 100 minerals. It's keeping his opponent from expanding in anywhere near as fast as he is. Uh, he's going to push over here to a decent spot. His opponent kind of knows where he's at. Interesting timing if he gets in here while the um, while the ravagers are morphing. He's going to get some ravagers. He's going to push back this army. He's going to take a decent attack. Uh, a couple biles landing well uh, for Surreal. Uh, not the fight necessarily he wanted. More roaches streaming from both sides, actually, uh, to take this fight. He hasn't even committed to, to Hydrox yet. And he's coming around from the back. He's closing him in with a sandwich of roaches. This is a Surreal sandwich. The bread being used is Pesosa. And he's gonna he's gonna get this third base. The drones come over here to help. Some brave little drones. As he's gonna pull back. So not only now he has a five, he has a four base, uh, four base five hatch. That's a uh, two base three hatch advantage on his opponent. He's transferring some drones over to his third. Take a quick look at Surreal's response. That was, um, that seemed to just be a poor, really just an unfortunate timing on Surreal's part. He had just finished Hydralisks and we're starting to add them to the army. Um, but that tech switch takes time. That tech switch takes, oh, oh, well, excuse me. There's a counter roach attack up here in the, uh, top left third base. And there's the GG from Surreal. Episosa takes it 2-0 with a really fantastic set of games actually so um congratulations to everybody in group f group group e we did f group e um congratulations to um i want to say it's pasosa and wait i'm gonna sneeze <coughs> oh, excuse me. i think it was pasosa it's <laughs> Excuse me. I think it was Pesosa and Surreal that it, it advanced here. Um, but don't quote me on it because I'm not doing the math over here. Uh, GG. Absolutely great games. And stay tuned on this channel in the stream because I'm going to be doing the round of 16 uh, next week. Or as soon as I can. If there's a group done, I'll be doing tomorrow. So um, stay tuned in the all-in. Look out for all-in announcements or all-invitational chat in the Discord. And that's where you'll find me. So until then, um, you know, go play some StarCraft.